For those brand new to this, um, again, this is an online step-by-step -step, um, acrylic tutorial. I do them for free sometimes here on Twitch. I try and do them, I guess I'm back to kind of once a month-ish, so welcome in. Uh, and for those who aren't painting along with us today, that's okay. Uh, you're more than welcome to just hang out and chill and see the painting uh, be completed step-by-step -step over about two to two and a half hours. I want to say closer to two and a half because this painting is a little more of a challenge just in terms of number of steps. I wouldn't say in terms of the techniques. So just as a heads up for everybody about that, this will probably be a little longer than you're used to, but it won't be all night, I hope, I promise. <laughs> um, but yeah, without... Um, I don't know what I was about to say there. Either way, <laughs> that's the rundown for tonight. I'll be teaching you step by step how to make this original design I created. Um, I have a blank canvas right behind here, as you can see, so you'll actually see me recreate it with you. Uh, you can see I have a nice still image permanently on my screen as well, where my mouse is moving around here, so you can always look at what the goal is or what the end finished product is going to look like, and otherwise you can just kind of have a look at my canvas and see where I'm at and follow along if you'd like. Uh, so so feel free to follow along with acrylic paints if you'd like to use those, that's what I'm using. Uh, but feel free to use any medium or anything you want to just get inspired with in terms of making something. Feel free to uh, even just use this as time to uh, make anything else, even if it's not following my design. Feel free to whip out some art supplies and have some fun. That's kind of the idea behind these tutorials. I hope to uh, encourage people to just do some art and relax a little bit. So as long as you're doing that, relaxing in any way, enjoying in any way, that's good with me. Uh, in terms of supplies, I did just stick them in the chat again, but I will be using five different paint colors. So I use red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white, and we'll mix all the nice in-between colors you see with those five colors. So things like oranges, browns, if you have those available, you can use them, but I will teach you how to mix them in this tutorial. Uh, in terms of brushes, I use three different brushes. And I use the same three every single time, by the way. I have this large flat one here, just good for backgrounds and such. I have a medium round one here, so a little more of a point, a little smaller. And then a small round one just for some nice details. So I find just those three is good for me. But again, if you have more, uh, that's totally fine. If you have different shapes of brushes, that's totally fine as well. Beside me, I also have a cup of paint water. I have some paper towel. Um, I also have this shirt on, which I don't mind getting paint on, thankfully. Uh, so as long as you're wearing something yeah, you don't mind getting paint on or maybe you have like a, a towel or something I usually use a towel as well just to kind of block the paint from spilling onto me here uh, That's always recommended too, just because acrylic paint can uh, be known to stain here and there And then for those who are wondering because I'm sure I'll get this question if you're looking to view this tutorial afterwards um, It does actually upload right to twitch automatically I think even as I'm streaming you can even kind of go back and view the video if you you need me to if you need to pause me or go back and view something uh, but otherwise when I'm done streaming the whole video will stay here for a couple months uh, but before that couple months is up I'll be uploading it to YouTube so you can always check out my YouTube page that's where all of my free tutorials go um, even right now there's tons to choose from and tons to look at so feel free to check out the YouTube channel uh, now or later and just know that again this tutorial will be uploaded there too and I think that's all for introduction. So we'll do our little cheers and then we'll begin. So let me talk a little bit about this painting first of all. Um, lots of elements to it, as I've been saying. I hope nobody's too, too intimidated because again, the steps themselves are not too hard. There's just a little bit more of them, a little more layers, things to make, right? So just keep that in mind as we go along. Take as much time as you need. If you feel like you only want to paint half of this tonight, that's always fine. There's no harm in taking a break here and there, but I will be going straight through it in the next two and a half hours. What I'll be starting with is kind of the top area, right in here. So you can see we have like some dark greens, maybe just some lighter greens kind of all mixed around. So we're just going to stick that background on first. And then what I'll do is I'll be kind of going through a little bit of a sketch, kind of just sketching out a couple elements. We have this nice river here. We have this, um, I guess, like a platform here. Uh, more ground area here. So I'll be sketching all that out with everybody and that way we can kind of visually see a little more in terms of like sections of the painting. And then we're just gonna work through them one by one, add a couple things in the foreground, just like any other painting we do, um, nice and slow all together. So I'm just prepping my palette here with some colors. The first color I will be mixing is a nice deep dark green. 
So what we can do is we can use our large flat brush. I would recommend pulling that one out to begin. It's a nice big boy or any bigger brush you have. You can go to your palette and you can mix blue and yellow together to make a nice deep green. And I would say half, half, maybe a little extra blue in there. That'll make it a deeper green. So let me do that on my palette with you all here. <clears throat> Thank you, Grok. Uh, Vonda, the link is in the chat there. I'll make sure I get a command going for that. I'm not even sure if we have a command. I dipped in the black by accident there, if you saw that, but I'm trying to do just blue and yellow. I don't know what my brain was thinking. Blue, yellow, there we go. Nice deep green. And again, I would recommend probably half half of those colors or maybe just a little extra blue. I find half half produces a pretty dark green, but if you want it even darker, some blue in there will get it a little bit darker for you. I'm just gonna move my original over here so I can peek at it as I go. Great, okay. So we're gonna start just by throwing that kind of on the top, I would say quarter to third of the canvas. So even if you wanna start kind of sketching out a little bit now, I would probably one, two, that's about a third, top third. So I just did a quick horizontal line across just to kind of show where that's going to start and end. And I'm just going to start putting on some deep green using, you can see small little brush strokes, just kind of back and forth like this. So this is really just a nice background for all of our lovely trees, which we will be adding. And I like to do, you can see kind of this crisscross back, forth, back, forth. And the reason I do that is it gives us some nice texture. You can see all the nice individual brush strokes there. This is just the canvas showing through anything. You kind of see a little lighter. It's not a different color, it's just the canvas. And that's what I like. Again, that kind of sh um, showcases a little bit kind of like of leaves, some light shining through some trees. So that's why I like that. If you'd prefer it to be smoother, if you're not a fan of this, just do some larger strokes and that'll help fix that up. But I'm gonna keep it just like this. Gives it a little more texture. Snow, welcome in, hello. Just gonna scroll up, make sure I'm not missing any messages. Snow, we're doing our painting tutorial, our toot. So that's why I'm a little distracted with the painting today. I'm gonna try and concentrate on painting. But welcome in, good to see you. Yes, Uncle, Uncle Snow. Oh, is it? Oh, that's okay, Vonda. Thank you for checking anyway. I'm going to, again, make sure that uh, all those links are accurate later on here. I'll fix that up. So this green, uh, you can see I'm starting on the left and I'm not going all the way over. I liked um, just kind of changing up the green a little as I went along. I'll throw in a little brown later on or just like a kind of deep, deep, deep green. And that way we get some variation. So I'm just kind of putting this green on the first, maybe third-ish. If you've already gone over a little bit more, that's okay. We're just going to be changing up the shade or color of the green just a little as we go along. So if you have about a third of the way across right now, that's perfect. Oh, thanks, Gurk. I see you've done that already. Perfect. Thank you. It was a link. I'll look at it later. <laughs> Yeah, either way, it's under maintenance, so it can't be used. So again, minor detail. You can see how I've done dark green. I'll be kind of switching to a lighter green, then back to darker again over here. Just giving a quick minute to do that first green, and then we'll move right along here. True. If I knew the command... <laughs> And a command would be good. I had a feeling I had a command for it. I just don't know what I named it. It's been too long. <laughs> That's helpful though. I need to look through my list of commands and kind of clear clear them up. Clean them up, clear them out. Yep. It's been a while. Okay, so if you have that green on there, just that small-ish patch, what we're doing now is we're just making a slightly, slightly lighter green. So you can do um, a lighter green two ways. You can either add a little white and you can see that'll lighten it up very quickly. Or you can add just more yellow and that'll also make a lighter green. You see that they both kind of do different things. The yellow kind of makes it more of a lime green. The white kind of keeps the same, I guess, tone. I'm sorry, I didn't go to art school, I'm sorry. Um, but reduces the shade or I guess lightens the shade. 
So I kind of do a mix of both. That way I'm not making like a very lime green that looks a little out of place here. So you can see what I did there. I grabbed a little yellow and a little white just to lighten it up. Slightly lighter green, nothing too crazy. Okay, and I'm going to put that closer to the middle. Again, it just kind of creates a light spot for our little trees. We're going to do some trees here later. I thought it was nice just to add a little light spot for this. And you can see what I'm doing is I'm adding the light green. Again, nothing like no straight lines or anything. It's not boxy or anything like that. Just kind of adding that into that same space. Same way, I'm also doing those back and forth motions. You can see I'm going quite fast. It's just me kind of <laughs> flicking the brush back and forth quickly. You can go slower if you want. But the other thing I'll point out that I did do is I also kind of blended this into the dark green. So as I was adding it, I was just kind of moving the light green over into the dark green. See that? Just kind of mixes them in a little bit, helps blend them together so it's more of a transition from dark to light green. So just kind of play with your brush a little in between those two colors and that'll help combine them. But otherwise I'm just still adding that lighter green a little further over. And then I'll switch back to a nice deep green for the end here. Again, we could have kept it simple with a very dark green all the way through, but I liked the variation in colors just to kind of showcase some highlights and lighter areas versus some darker areas. I'll stop about there and just leave this section for a nice deep dark green next. <clears throat> yeah, even that list of commands, I feel they, those probably all still work, but there's more relevant ones too. <laughs> Bob quotes, oh yeah, we need to do more Bob quotes. If we're going to have animals around, we all have to be concerned about them and take care of them. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Good chances, good chances. Oh, and the edges, oh my goodness. I always forget to say this now, but if you are painting along with me on a wrapped canvas like I am, like a canvas that has this kind of frame, this wooden frame here, it's nice and bouncy. Uh, don't forget your edges, thank you, Robin. So that means just kind of like move the paint along to the sides here. You can move it to the top when we get to the other side, move it along the side. It just helps complete the whole painting. We don't want to leave those edges behind. That's good canvas there. And yeah, it just kind of showcases the painting continuing on to the side. I think it's a nice look. That way, if you do see it kind of from an angle, it just kind of continues rather than having a big white stripe down the side. So I always recommend that. Okay, so I have my light green on. I'm just going to go ahead and continue with my dark green here. So I'm re-grabbing that same old color. That deep green. Ooh, that's a little too blue. And we're just doing the same thing. We're going to add that to the side here and kind of blend it into the light green the side. So same idea. I'm just using my very quick, <laughs> the very chaotic strokes. Just <laughs> again, you don't need to go that fast. But at the same time, if you want to, you can as well, because we're not trying to do anything specific in here other than apply the paint in a, in a nice textured way. So I'm just adding it to the side and then once again you can see I'm kind of blending it into the light green just by continuing the same brush strokes in between the two colors. So we've just created this nice kind of light spot here. Again we'll put some trees here. It's like the light is shining on them. It looks very nice. So that's the background up there. Okay I'll give another minute or two just in case anyone's kind of playing with that whole area at this point. Maybe you're blending the colors into one another. And then I'm going to move us on to kind of sketching out the rest of the canvas here, the rest of the design here, just very roughly so we kind of know what's coming up. Dang, look at those stats. Nice, nice. Yeah, we, wow, we passed uh, 3,700. I forget if I was online during that or not. Cool to see it continuing though. So yes, next we'll be kind of just sketching out where the river is going to go, where these little platforms are going to go. And then we can just work on them just section by section. It's a lot easier, at least when I'm painting, I find to just break down sections. That's kind of what I was doing with that bird painting I was playing with the other day. <laughs> I've kind of sectioned things off and I'm like, I know the bird looks goofy. <laughs> 
it's fine. We're gonna leave the bird alone. We'll concentrate on this stuff for now, you know? Just break things down. Work slowly, section by section. Don't worry about how everything else is looking. We'll just, we'll get to it eventually. Mm-hmm. That 4K. Next is five. Or no, yeah, after that is five. Whoa. Whoa. All right, what color should we use? Let's do, let's do our light blue. How about that? All right, so if you have that green section done, I'm just going to move us on to, like I said, lightly sketching out our next few sections here, just so we can kind of visualize what's about to happen. So in terms of color, I was just debating what color we should use to sketch out. I think a nice light blue would be good. We can use some light blue, and that way it's really easy to cover up when we add our river, which is blue, and then our two other sections, which are a nice deep brown, that'll cover up the blue very easily. Yeah, when you're making sketches with paint, just try and use a light paint color and that way it can easily be covered. So I'm just grabbing a large pile of white, mixing in a little bit of blue. And you can see I'm just making a nice pale blue as a result. Something like that. I might make mine just a little darker just so you all can see, but try and keep yours nice and light. It'll be easier to cover if you make an error. Welcome back, Tiggy. All right, and like I keep saying, I'm just going to walk you through kind of sketching some little areas. So the first area we have is a little bit of water kind of pooling up up here. So I'm going to start by sketching just a little below our green area. I'm just doing a little horizontal line across. So I'm just kind of cutting off where the water's going to be a little more still behind all of our trees and things like that. It's just a nice horizontal line. So we're probably just a little below a third. We're not quite at half yet. You can see we're still further up the canvas. So if you have a different size canvas than me, you can just kind of look at how much remaining canvas you have. You're welcome, Tiggy. I hope you're enjoying that puzzle, if you're still doing that. Okay, and then we can kind of like sketch out the river here. So the river, um, river, waterfall, a mixture of both stream, whatever we want it to be. Um, Vonda, thank you for gifting to Tiggy there. Um, I made my stream or waterfall or whatever we want to call it open up pretty large at the top, pretty wide at the top. I would say it's maybe just to the right of halfway. Maybe I'll move it a little more this way. So we have a little more space on the left versus the right. So maybe just a little off center. So I've got two little tick marks there. And from those, I'm just going to create my stream. So I'm just kind of doing a wiggly angled line down like this. At points, I'll kind of come into the stream, come out of the stream. So go a little right, go a little left. That'll create kind of ridges in your little platform or cliff area. Wiggle my brush maybe down a little bit. And then before I reach the very bottom, I'm going to make sure I go way over to the left so that we can get some nice water all along the bottom of our canvas. See how I'm just leaving that space here. Almost looks like a face, huh? Spooky. Now we'll never, <laughs> we'll never not see it. So yeah, that's for the left-hand side of the river. And if I didn't say before, if yours is a little different than mine, maybe yours is a lot different than mine, that's all okay. You don't need to make this river exactly the same, of course. It's just an idea for you to start with and then you can kind of change things as we go. And on the right-hand side, and again, this is all very quick and brief. We can always kind of uh, clean this up later. I'm starting with another angled line coming down to the right. And I'm trying not to reach the right hand side yet. So I'm kind of moving right, coming down a little maybe, and then going off of the canvas maybe about two thirds of the way down. So it does eventually fall off before the corner. And again, just gives lots of room for all these nice little, tiny little waterfalls before we get to the very bottom. So we've essentially just made like two pieces of land here and here, and then our water is all in here. So that just helps us kind of visualize a bit more. I'll just keep this up for a minute or two in case anyone needs to replicate that. And then we're going to stick some dark brown on our little land areas. We're not going to worry about details. We're just going to put some bases down. Lots of bases. Uh, Vonda, again, thank you very much. I saw that come through as I was painting, so thank you again. For that little gifted sub, take your bun again. Nice two-month bun, very nice. 
It's a witch. It does look kind of Halloween-y if we had a little hat on here. Again, that eye really makes it. Yes, the very iconic, like, pointy chin. Nice pointy nose as well. Just need a nice triangular hat. There we are. It's the Halloween painting, everybody. Nice fall and Halloween painting. Thanksgiving and Halloween paintings, Aaron, for October. Yes, I know, but what? <laughs> but what specifically? Because I've made a lot of different... Um, at least two years ago, I made a bunch of different fall paintings. And then last year, I think there was at least one or two as well. I even have a witch, you know? I have a lot of specific ones. Oh, that's nice, Charlene. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, for those who uh, don't know what I'm referencing, I was asking earlier in stream what people want to see in terms of themes coming up. Because I do have a design, which I'll show you a little later, which I think will be our next design, which we'll paint next month. Um, but I'm kind of debating whether I want to do something different instead for October just because it's Halloween and fall and all of that, so. Either during this tutorial or even after, if you have ideas for different themes or designs that you haven't really seen from me, I'm more than happy to hear it. Because I want to make sure I'm painting things that people are interested in. Alright, that should be enough time for that sketch. Uh, water sketch. So let's move on to, as I said, we're just putting some dark brown in our two sections. Again, we're not worried about any details. We'll add our little highlights and more structured things into both of those sections later. For now, I'm just going to make a nice dark brown, fill those both in. So as I said, you might have brown in your painting collection or your paint collection. Uh, feel free to just use that. That'll be a lot easier. But if you're like me and you have uh, just your primary colors in black and white, you can mix brown by mixing three of those colors. You can mix together yellow with some red. And then a touch of black. The black is going to is what's going to kind of turn it into more of a brown. When you start with your red and yellow, you'll see an orange. And then when you add black, you can see it turns it into a nice deep dark brown. You don't want to add too much black though, because that'll of course just turn the whole color black with black being a very powerful dark color. We want to use maybe a little less of it just to keep this more brown than black specifically. So again, that was red, yellow, and black mixed together. I might even want that a little darker. You can always test your colors as you can see I did there just by wiping it on the canvas, seeing how it's looking. And then if you don't like it, just change it up a little. I just want mine a little darker. I want like a very deep brown. So I put a little extra black in there that's better. And I'm simply filling that all in. Again, you can see there's no real technique here. We're just filling this in. And I'm not even worried about, see, making these edges very clean yet because we're going to be adding the water coming up soon and that's probably going to overlap with our edges a bit, but we can fix those up later. So for now, this is again, really, really rough here. Going along those edges. Oh, Brittany, hey, I saw you, uh, yeah, comment either in the event page or somewhere. Instagram, perhaps? It was somewhere. <laughs> it's all good. You don't worry. As usual, this is on YouTube. I think you even mentioned that, too. You know the drill. How's it going, though? <clears throat> yeah, girl, feel free to let me know. Mm -hmm. Excellent, Brittany. Yeah, Brittany's always like, already like, I'm going to watch this later. Perfect. You know the drill. I'll see you in another time on YouTube. No worries at all. Oh, sorry, say again. It was uh, red, yellow, and black. CRBE, thank you for following. Red, yellow, black. So I usually start with red and yellow because it makes an orange first, and then I can slowly add the black to it until it turns into a nice deep brown. Hope that helps. No worries, no worries. CJ, hey! Oh, Gooby's here. Hello, Gooby too. Oh my goodness. Hi guys, hope you're having a good time. We We're just in the middle of our toot. We've created a witch's face. Maybe you can see it. <laughs> just blocking in our colors. What are you two up to tonight? Gooby. So once again, I'll just say again, no need for making this perfect. You can see there's little blotches in my brown. You can see there's some, you know, ridges 
This is really just, again, a base color before we add lots of detail on top, so... Put those fears aside, we don't need to make this perfect. We never need to make it perfect, to be clear. But especially not now, because we'll be playing around with it more. It's going to be okay, I'll make a post in Discord. Sure, sure! No worries, Brittany, no worries! Have a good time with whatever you're busy with. Hope it's all good. Please do, Gro, please do. Inspo pics are always lovely to look at. As we know, I really like looking at photos and just kind of... Even just for color palettes, just to choose some colors and then make my own thing. Always a good plan. Alright, so hopefully you can see how that is kind of turning into this now. We've tried to replicate this as close as possible with that little point there and all of that on the river. But again, if yours is a little different here and there, it's no worries at all. It's more important that you like your painting versus making it close to mine, right? What's the point if you don't like it? So if you want to do something a little different or your brush just decides to do something a little different, that's okay. Sitting on the balcony drinking ciders. Well, that sounds lovely. It's kind of gray here. I hope it's a little better weather for you guys. You sleepy, Tiggy, you should sleep then. Allow your body to recharge. <clears throat> Again, just giving a quick extra minute for that brown. I'll move us to the blue next. Uh, rain stopped, luckily. It was gross earlier. I don't think, um, yeah, it's rained here, but it's just been, like, yucky most of the day. That's good, though. Glad you're able to chill outside on the patio. Alright, so coming up next, as I said, we're doing this nice blue in the river. Uh, we're actually going to add, I guess, some rocks before then. Uh, so we'll be continuing to use our brown and putting in these little dots of rock so that when we add our blue We can kind of go a little over top of them as well um, Excuse me, <laughs> we'll be doing blue first and then the rocks after um, We have to go a little back and forth in terms of adding our colors and adding certain elements So sorry, we're putting blue first. I mixed up my words there Then we'll be putting the rocks on after that um, and then throwing on some kind of like mist and different uh, shades of blue to kind of cover them up a bit. So uh, once again we'll be doing a very basic layer of blue first so we don't need to worry about all the nice fancy colors or like you know the direction of the brush strokes for the most part. We're just going to throw on some darker blues into some lighter blues and then we'll kind of again move things around and add more layers to make things look a little more cohesive on top. So let's start back here where my mouse is moving here. We're going to start in the background. So up here and then we'll kind of move us down as we add more blue. So I'm going to keep using our large flat brush. I have washed it off. We don't want to have any extra brown on there. And we're going to make a nice kind of like a deep blue to begin with. So I'm going to use my blue paint. I'm going to throw a touch of white in there just to brighten it up a little bit. But mainly, I also want to add some red in there. So I've got blue, a little bit of white, and some red. And red's kind of the, why are we adding red color? Like, why are we adding this into our, into our blue? Um, I find adding some red just makes a nice kind of deep blue without making it, uh, keeping it bright, I should say. By adding the red, it kind of mutes the blue a little bit. I use phthalo blue, in case anyone's wondering, and that tends to be very, very bright and vibrant. So by adding the red, again, it mutes it, it kind of tones it down, it makes it look a little more natural, and it darkens it. So that's good for two things. We want it darker and a little more muted. Uh, depending on what blue you use, you might already have a little more of a muted blue. So something that looks a little darker and a little more natural, less fluorescent and vibrant. So you might be okay just using your plain blue, but I had to mix a couple things in there to make mine a little more natural looking. So again, I was blue. I added a little white and a little red. And you can see what I'm doing with that is I'm sticking that right at the top here in that top section that we left blank. So using my large brush, just swiping left and right back and forth. Just as a nice base layer, making sure I'm not leaving any gaps as well. So you can see how I'm maybe a little overlapping my green just to make sure there's no gaps. Get 
getting right up tight to the brown as well, even though the browns may be a little wet still. Just doing my best, so just using the paint on the brush, maybe overlapping if I need to, or just allowing the blue to meet the brown, fill up, filling up those gaps. Yeah, nice and smooth as well, back and forth. <clears throat> My mind says stay up, but my body says lie down and go to sleep. Why does your mind say stay up? Is it the uh, the sleep schedule issue? All right, nice deep blue, deep blue. Ryan, hey, guy, go ad jail. <laughs> Sorry about the ad jail. If I didn't, uh, if I could stop the automatic sending to ad jails, I would. But welcome in, Ryan. We're doing a, a toot right now, short for tutorial. I'm teaching people how to paint a painting step by step. So welcome in. Good to see ya. Tiggy, have you heard of an artist who can paint with both hands and both feet at the same time? She working on six different paint. How does to what? <laughs> two hands, two feet, six paintings. That's four. What? Where are the other two? Uh, two brushes going? Are there two in each hand? Tiggy, that's amazing. I haven't heard of that. No. Amanda, well, this toot will be on YouTube as all of my free toots are. YouTube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. I'll try to upload it in the next week or so. <laughs> the ad didn't get you, Ryan. At least, at least we know that. It didn't convince you of anything. All right, everybody. So we have our nice dark blue. I'll keep catching up with chat as I have time here. Prioritizing the tutorial. So as we get down, you can kind of see the blue in our original here, how it gets a little lighter at points, right? We want to make it a little lighter because it's flowing a little quicker. Maybe we can kind of see through the water a little bit because it's kind of like shooting off some rocks and going very fast. So I thought a good way to showcase that was just by making kind of lighter blues where the water's rushing a little bit more. And then you can see maybe a little bit more darker blue if it was a little more, um, a little more stable. Not moving as much. <laughs> <laughs> a little slower, I guess. So we got some light blue. We'll go back to a little dark blue in this little pool. And then down here, lots of light blue where the water's rushing away here. So we're going to work our way down with some lighter blue. So let's grab that same brush. And you can see I haven't washed it off. But I'm just going to grab a little pile of white and make a lighter blue from the dark blue I had. So I'm just adding white. You can see on the side here, it's making a lighter version of what we had. And I'm going to use that um, to continue my river down. Okay. So same idea. We're not too worried about how this water is looking in terms of like all the nice brush strokes and all of that. Or the direction. But I am kind of following the way the river is going. So I'm not worried about making these really nice wispy strokes quite yet. But I am still kind of following where the water is flowing. It's flowing kind of down, so I'm continuing down here. So you can see I'm kind of blocking in this light blue, kind of in the first half of this uh, more waterfall area. And you can see the blue's kind of overlapping with the brown, getting it a little messy. That's all okay. We're just trying to prevent them from completely mixing together. But if there's a little overlap, that's okay. And I'm also going to blend this into the water above it. So right now you can see it's very just dark blue, light blue. We don't want that. We want to make sure this is kind of blended together a little more seamlessly. So what I'm doing now is I'm just wiping my brush in between the two colors. And you can see once again, I'm trying to go in a direction that makes sense for the water. So I am kind of brushing more up and down and into this dark blue. You can see how it makes it look like the water's kind of rushing into this one area, right? So again, just kind of curving my brush back and forth. That's moving those two wet paint colors together, getting our nice blend, while also showing us a little more direction in terms of where the water is flowing. So very softly just moving back and forth. And then if you need to, you can even go side to side a little just to kind of smooth out any areas that you may have been messing with as you did that. Okay, so I'll just give a minute or two. You can play with that one section. And we're essentially going to do that a second time with dark blue and then light blue again, finishing off our water base. <clears throat> 
Uh, nose? Is it nose? Nose dude? I'll, I'll call you nose if that's okay. Nose, I'm a bit behind. Can you explain the mix for browns? Of course, no worries. Uh, red, yellow, and black. So the three, one, two, three here. So I start with red and yellow to make an orange, and then I add black to make it this nice brown. So start with your red, yellow, equal amounts, and then just add little amounts of black until you have a nice brown that you enjoy. Hope that helps. Sleep schedule issue. I see. Volcano okay, no nudes. What are those? Hot noodles? Chai didn't work. No worries, Amanda. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I think I'm going to stick to Sunday evenings. I find that works for most people, but I am interested to hear if uh, people are looking for a different day of the week. Maybe now that like school's back in, we're more back in the office. I don't know if different days work better, but that could be just an open conversation. But either way, they'll always be on YouTube as well. Two paintings for each hand. Oh my gosh, Tiggy, that's insane. Yes, please do. Marion loves Sundays. I figure Sunday is probably best for most, but I am always open to here. Even if it's just I change it up here and there, but I think Sundays work for me as well. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, fair, fair, different time zones. Iowix says 12.40 a.m. for is, or sorry, it's 12.40 a.m. for me. So if I was gonna join these, it would be YouTube. Makes sense. I know, it's really hard, obviously, it's probably impossible to find a time that works for everybody, but I'm aware, I know, you're across the pond. Can't do Sunday nights only because I gotta get kids ready for back to school. Oh, okay, Mondays, but can always look back. I gotcha, okay. Yeah, the UK. Across the pond from me in Canada. Vonda, thank you for gifting a nose, that's very nice of you, thank you. Nose, you're now subscribed. You'll uh, get no more ads. You can use our little emotes and all of that. Lots of fun things. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> all right, so back to these colors here. So we had our dark blue, our light blue. I'm going to move us into a slightly darker blue again just for this quick little bit. I'll point it out on the original here just for right in here. And then we're going to move back into our light blue a little further, or I guess closer to us, rather a little brighter. All right, so where'd my dark blue go? There it is. So I'm just grabbing the same dark blue as before. You can just either mix more or grab any remainder that you have. Just throwing some in here just to give a little more shadow again, a little more depth to get that more realistic feel. It's, uh, it's a good idea to kind of use lots of different versions of colors rather than just one blue. You know, you want to use a couple different blues, kind of change it up where you're going. So I've got a nice dark blue just in this small section here. Kind of where, um, if you're following along with what I've done to this little platform, kind of like underneath the little area that kind of jets out. So anything kind of below, like this little pool in here. Little resting area for the water. And same thing, you can see I'm just applying that. I'm kind of going back and forth with my brush to apply it. And then I'll start to blend it up into the light blue. Same idea, just by moving my brush into that previous color. So I'm going up and down. And allowing those two to blend together so I get more of a seamless section in between the two. And it doesn't have to be perfect, of course. You might see it looking a little streaky. And I'll tell you, we have lots to do on top of this water base. We have all this nice kind of foam and all of these nice dry strokes we're going to add. So any streaks that you kind of see like these, I really try not to worry about them because I guarantee they'll kind of be more in the background later anyway. But if you do want to keep blending, you can just keep moving your brush in between, softening up those areas. You can add a little more paint if you need to, like if you need to re-add some of the light blue, that might help with, with blending a little bit. But otherwise, I'm just using the paint that's already on the canvas and just lightly moving them in between each other. And then because the water kind of calms down over here, I'm kind of going back to my horizontal strokes, as I said before, kind of just stroking left and right. As if the water's kind of pooling in here, just chilling before it takes another ride down. Okay, I'm going to leave that there for a minute or two as I catch up with uh, chat here. Your bestie is Canadian. I'm not surprised because Canadians are lovely people. Yeah, Grok's at 142, so right with you, Iwix, yes. 
Thank you, Tiggy. I'll have a look later. Oh, I see. It's backwards for Edson. I see. Okay. Well, I can try and call you Edson then, if that's a little easier. I was having trouble with them. Um, not just nose, it's the D in there. Nozda. <laughs> I'll try for Edson. I'll remember that. See that cute bun by your name? That means you're a bun now. Woohoo! All right, so after this next step, after this light blue, we'll have a nice big base down, which is really a lot to tackle, honestly. I know it seems very straightforward and simple at this point, but sketching things out, getting those bases on can be a fair amount of work. So that'll be a lot we've done already with just this next step, which we're about to do here. Lovely, he is okay, I guess. <laughs> My best friend's okay, I guess. Very blunt for it. Oh, really? I'm surprised because honestly, usually the Canadian stereotype is like, I don't want to say pushover, but <laughs> we're very patient and very just like, it's okay. We'll just go with the flow. We're going to squeeze right by you, you know, things like that. <laughs> That's interesting, Iwix. Perfect. I'll stick with Edson then. That works for me. <laughs> Canadians are pushovers. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're just we're just a little more relaxed, chill, I think. So to hear your friend is blunt and forward is a little little surprising. But we come in all different shapes and sizes, I guess. In your nose? What the heck kind of a faucet was it, Todd? Did you get like a nose surgery? What's that? A new faucet. All right, so as I've been teasing here, we're going to put down some light blue as our last step here for the water for now. We have lots to do with the water later, but for now, some nice light blue. So just going back into oh, over here. Oh, I barely have any left. I'm just remixing some of that light blue. So again, that was just using more white into your existing blue that you've been using. And one more time, we're just going to add that below the last blue that we added. And then we will blend up into the blue and create a nice seamless look. So you can fill up the rest of your space with that nice, really light blue. Just kind of doing, oops, those edges here. Sometimes I use my finger to blend. It works okay. And I'm just going to fill in the space and then I'll blend. I personally like applying my paint color first. Still need to mix more. I like applying my paint color first and then uh, blending. So that way I can concentrate on just getting the nice color that I've made onto the canvas here. And then worry about blending afterwards. And the water, again, kind of levels out a bit, but then quickly starts to flow um, kind of over and down. So you can see, once again, I'm kind of doing my horizontal strokes, but I'll try my best to kind of bring them down a little bit at the end. I know it doesn't make a huge difference because it's just one color, right? But those brush strokes do kind of show up on your canvas. You can kind of see the direction of things. So it does help a little bit to kind of move your brush in the direction that you want the water to be going. So you can see I'm kind of going on an angle kind of stroking on top of the paint to kind of direct it. And kind of working my way up here to blend as well. So just moving my brush back and forth amongst that water in between those two blues, softening that up. And I am going, yeah, a little back and forth and a little up and down because the water's kind of just starting to flow again up here. It kind of does a little bit of a little bit of a waterfall here. So maybe I'll go down like this. Get some direction in there. Okay. And again, if you need to re-dip re back into any old colors, that's no problem at all. If you need to re-add some of the dark blue, maybe it's a little dry and it's not really blending a lot, that's okay. You can just add a little on your brush, move in between those two colors. I'm sure that'll help just kind of freshening the paint back up again. 
there. Anything like that. Again, you can see not perfect. We can see some streakies going on in here. That's all okay. We're not going to panic. It's all all right. It will be fixed up as we add more. I'm just re-adding a little more paint on here. I'm just re-adding almost a little bit of a darker light blue. I don't like how light that is here. I guess that's a good general tip. If you ever add a color that you're not a fan of, you just want to change it up maybe a little bit. So for me, I just want to make this a touch darker. You can just grab some more paint on your brush. I'm just grabbing the blue, for example, and just swiping that on top, just trying to blend it into the color below. You can see how it's slightly changing it up, making it a little darker. You can really do that at any point, as long as your paint color is still wet, if it's kind of freshly applied. Just grabbing more of whatever color you want to add on top, whether it's to mix in or just rest on top. You can see it'll just kind of blend in as you brush on top. And it's like you have a brand new color. So no need to panic if you add something you're not a big fan of. You can always change it as it's wet, or you can even change it afterwards once it's dry. But it's always easier to kind of manipulate it while it's still wet. <laughs> Oh, because you icy as a result of the spicy noodles and new faucet. I got gotcha. <laughs> Never met him IRL online. He's very much. Don't do that. That's silly. Uh, that's dumb. No change on the sky. It looks weird. Change that. Do this. It's actually great though. As long as you appreciate it, Iwix, that's fine. I wouldn't be able to tolerate that too much personally, <laughs> especially if it comes to art. I ask for opinions and that means I'm welcoming the opinions. Otherwise... Don't you comment on what I'm doing. Let's just say you like it. If you're here to say, like, that looks wrong, change that, Aaron, why do you do it this way? Sorry, it's just the way I do it. <laughs> if you'd like to do it a different way, you can. <laughs> but yeah, usually people just drop in criticism like that without being asked. I say, no, 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 no. I can ask if I want it. Otherwise, no thank you. Okay, so just as a heads up, next I'm going to move us back up to here. So what I'm kind of doing is, as you can see, we've put our bases on. Now I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to start to add our elements on top of the very far background. I'll add the elements on top of our uh, brown areas here. We've got some trees and sticks going on or some highlights. And then we're going to be cleaning up the river. We'll add some rocks in first and then kind of clean that up as well. So it's kind of like we're doing it twice over. In a way, we kind of go from background to foreground with all of our elements, all of our little sections, and then we'll go background to foreground with all of our foreground elements, all of our things that go on top. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, we're almost an hour in already. That'll be fine. Not all the time. He just knows I prefer to be told if road... Oh, well, there you go. See, yeah, like you said, it works for you. <laughs> Other times they're like, no, I like it this way. And he's like, okay, see, that works. That works fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> mm hmm. That makes a big difference, I always. Yeah, it's not like a, this is bad, just like, here's my opinion. Yeah, I can get that. I'm just, I'm more the type who, uh, I wait, I wait till I'm asked, or I wait to ask before I want to, to receive the potential criticisms. <laughs> but I'll always take the compliments, of course. <laughs> Of course. Mm-hmm. Arts Cat, hey! Thank you so much for subscribing! And hello! I hope you're enjoying the tutorial if that's what you're here for. You're bun! Thank you very much! For those who don't know what subscribing is, for those watching along, um, on Twitch you can choose to support me if you want, it's not required, uh, by clicking the subscribe button underneath. That just gives me a small, very small monthly fee. Um, that's taken out of credit card or whatever you set it up to do. It can even just be one month. It doesn't need to be every time. Um, yeah, and it just helps support me as I stream. It's a little bit of encouragement for me to keep going and it gives you some benefits too. You get ad free viewing. So if anyone has been hit with ads, I apologize. I can't control that. But if you do subscribe, you get the ads removed uh, and you can enjoy some nice emotes. So that's what subscribing is. Whenever you hear me say, thank you for subscribing. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying thank you. Ruth, hey! Hi, Aaron. You hot a nice color. I love it. You hot a nice color. If you're complimenting the color here, thank you so much! Thank you! We are about the painting today, so we want to uh, concentrate on complimenting the painting. Thank you, Ruth, though. 
if that's what you're saying. <laughs> Um, I've just now joined, heard about you from a Facebook event I saw. Yeah, Arts, I'm so glad you found it. Lovely, welcome. Yeah, so you can see I'm uh, partially through our tutorial here. Um, if you'd like to paint along, you can either start that now or you can wait and uh, go backwards because this video will be available to view later. Um, and yeah, I'm so glad you found me on Facebook because I'll always post upcoming events on Facebook too. So you can look forward to other events so you can plan ahead as well if uh, if you miss this one. Maybe you've been painting along this whole time, I'm not sure. <laughs> but I'm glad you're here the way, so welcome in. Okay, so let me move you back up to where I was talking about here. We've got all our base done, we're going to move back up here. So the first thing we have, we have kind of just two fun trees here. We have this kind of red, orange, yellow one, if you can see that behind the branch. There's two there. Kind of a red, orange, yellow. We've got a nice kind of green, yellow one as well. And that's just going to be using our brush and tapping. Getting some nice texture in there. So let's switch brushes. I'm going to our medium brown brush here. I like this one for tapping and making that noise. Uh, and I'll start us off with some base colors and then as usual, I'll add on some little highlights and shadows. So let's start with a nice orange. That's what I'll use for the first tree here back to my messy messy plate I'm going to mix together two colors I'm going to mix yellow with red to make a nice bright orange that'll be our nice base for this tree there you can see it there <clears throat> there we go nice bright orange you can see I started with half half, but I might add a little extra yellow in there just to make it a little lighter and brighter. The more yellow, the lighter or brighter the orange will become. So as usual, it's up to you, but if you want a little bit of a brighter orange, a little yellow will help. I just take my brush after loading it up with paint and I'm gonna start tapping. So I'm tapping right on top of the canvas. Making that noise, of course, it helps me. I'm putting this tree, uh, you can see it's pretty much middle, I would say. Yep, pretty much smack middle. I'm starting with a nice wide base, so I'm kind of tapping close to the water here, right on top of that green. And I'm making a nice tall triangular shape. So just tapping my brush, trying to form a nice triangular shape all the way up here. Just keeping it nice and wide at the bottom, making it a little wider, or excuse me, a little thinner as it goes up. And it can be a nice loose triangle, of course. We don't want it to be, you know, very clean triangle. We want it to be uh, more like a tree, right? Where you can see little, little splotches coming in and out a little bit. So I'm tapping my brush and maybe tapping a little outside and then back in, trying to make it a little softer on those edges, but mainly trying to get a nice triangular shape. Acrylics, yes, acrylics. I'm a truck driver, can't paint now. Of course, yes, <laughs> especially if you're driving a truck now. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to get back into it while on the road. Yeah, um, so yeah, YouTube is uh, where I post all of the recorded tutorials. So if the live events don't work for you, you might be, as you said, in the middle of driving. Wow, I didn't hear that. Maybe I missed it. Um, yes, yeah, so if you'd like to kind of paint on your own time, check out my YouTube channel and uh, you can see all of the past tutorials there as well as this one in the next week or so. There's the link for you. Thank you for the wow. Joined a call, it was so loud, and Mr. Lost reply. I'll uh, scroll back up to your message and I'll reply again here, hold on. Just applying a little more orange. There we go. And you can see how as I kind of layer on top, it helps with the opacity. So if you feel like it's getting a little transparent, just kind of keep adding some paint. You can also use my little secret of adding a little white to your paint. I find that helps with the opacity. It's not about the color, it's just about um, kind of the paint resting on top of our darker paint. So if you find your orange is too transparent, try adding just a touch of white and that might help with opacity. You'll get more of an opaque covering uh, with a little white in there. Well, number four round work, yes. Um, what is this size? I actually don't know the size of mine. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. Supplies. <clears throat> I have... Oh yeah, I use around six, so a four will be fine. Yeah, it's probably just a little smaller, right? 
Yeah, it's and that'll be fine. Yeah, no well, no worries, Arts. That works for that works for you, that's fine. Ruth, I'll follow you on YouTube. This time does not work for me. Yeah, no worries, yeah. That's why the YouTube is there. It's just a nice flexible uh resource for everybody. You can really use it whenever. I don't plan to take anything down. Why would I? <laughs> They're there for good. As long as YouTube stays up, I'll be up there. All right, I'll give another quick half minute on that orange and then I'll move us to the other tree here, just a little bit of a lighter green. And then we're gonna pile on some other colors on top. Once again, adding our base and then we'll put some highlights and stuff on top. And now um, we had Iwix's message. Oh yes, okay. All I was saying Iwix to that was I can understand now. I said I'm more the person who just doesn't like advice criticism unless I ask for it, so I'm always pretty clear about that. I'm like, not until I ask, thank you. But I can see if they're just like, okay, <laughs> when you're like, no, I like it this way, I said that would work fine. I can understand. Like a nice soft, yeah, more of like soft, um, not even criticism, just like feedback. I can understand. Hi, Scaredy, welcome in. Cute little Lily there. We're in the middle of our toot. Trying to paint the, the painting right here. As you can see, welcome in. I was in Scaredy's stream earlier. Shout out to Scaredy. Making her little doggos. Showing me some little doggos, some IRL doggos. Very cute. Sounds good, Arts. Enjoy the truck driving and uh, I'll see you another time. No worries. Great, Ruth. That's the whole point. Ruth said you made me, inspired me uh, with your work. Lovely. That is the whole point. Glad you're saying that. Just want to inspire some others to have some fun creating. Yes, go to sleep, Tiggy. Have a good sleep. Okay, so let's move on to our second tree. Again, you can see here, I'll zoom in for everybody. It's more of like a medium green, I would say, and then we put some yellow on top and really kind of lighten it up here. So we're going to start with a nice light green, or I guess medium green, excuse me, and then we'll throw on some light greens and yellows. So let's mix together lots of yellow with a little bit of blue this time. So we are looking more for like a lime green. Oops, remember before I was uh, talking about lime green versus more of just a muted kind of blue green? I'm looking for more of a nice lime green now. Maybe a little darker than that. So I'm purely using, I'll specify, I'm purely using yellow and blue. I'm trying not to add white because I want kind of that vibrant lime coming through. So that'll be a result of adding more yellow. See that there? and see how it's comparing to this green. See, they're both kind of medium, but this one's more of like a muted bluey green, and this one's a little more vibrant. That's because I'm only using blue and yellow in there. All right, and I'll start to add that one. So at the start, you might notice it might not be popping off of the background quite as nicely. It is maybe a little different. But when we add our highlights, that's what's really going to pop it off. So same idea, just tapping my brush making that triangular shape, and it's just resting, you can see, to the right of the orange tree, just right beside it. And I just chose to do the two. I didn't want to spend too much time making background trees in this painting, so I just chose to do the two. And that way, if you like these, maybe you want to add some more, you can spend your own time making a different design with more of these trees. I like them. Very soft, quite straightforward, just tapping a nice big solid triangle. Just wanted to get all the fall colors, you know? That's why I have so many different greens and oranges and reds and browns in this painting. Just all of the fall colors, as many as possible. Okay, I'll leave that tree just the way it is for a minute or two, and then we can start to add some highlights on top of them. <clears throat> kind of person I ask for for advice on everything so instead of me asking every time he just replies with advice I guess it's just by habit that makes sense <laughs> just replies nice though his seal of rule perfect that's always nice as well um, are we taking a break um, I'm not really doing any official breaks I'm just going to keep painting right through while giving I guess time in between steps so when I'm talking to the chat um, I wouldn't say it's like a break it could be a break if you're done painting 
but no like official break if that's what you're asking i try and do this one or my my toots on twitch just kind of like step 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 with some time in between the steps yes yeah no worries edson the tip about the white um yeah i we all have different kinds of paint i know we might be all using acrylics but different brands of paint i should say uh, and the more expensive brands I find tend to have better pigments. They be they tend to cover better. They might be a little thicker, um, but I do use a very standard cheap acrylic paint. <laughs> I don't get fancy with it. I want to save money too. I use the Start Academic Acrylic Paint, not sponsored, not sponsored. Um, this is found at Curry's Art Store in Canada, if you live in Canada. Um, otherwise, there's lots of other comparable brands from Blick uh, places like that that have like a huge tub of paint for cheap uh, but yeah as a result the paint is a little thinner I find it doesn't cover as well so my secret tip is adding a little white and for some reason the white paint really helps with coverage mm -hmm. a good toot all the toots I had today were fleeting <laughs> it is a fart joke <laughs> I gotcha <laughs> oh boy sounds good Ruth I'll see you another time Oh, that's so cute. Lily in her little cave earlier. Okay, so we were just talking about white paint, and I'm actually going to use that white trick right now uh, because I'll be adding some highlights and some shadows, actually, to these trees. I'll be adding some nice yellow on top, yellow on top here. Um, and in order to ha allow the yellow to really stick on top without it becoming transparent, I mix a little white into the yellow. So I'm going to take the same brush I've been using. I did wash it off, of course, on the side here. So after washing it off, I'm just going to add some yellow into some white and create like a nice light yellow color. It's not really about making the yellow lighter. It's more just about adding the white in there so that, again, it doesn't come off as transparent. So you really don't need a lot of white. I want to still keep our yellow nice and bright. But just a little will definitely help with uh, stacking this yellow on top of the orange. So you can see it on the side here and just kind of mixing a little white in there. And then what I like to do is I kind of tap the yellow off just a little bit. And then I'll go to my tree and start tapping. So the reason I tap the paint off a tiny bit before going on top of our tree is because I don't want this to come off in big blobs. The goal is no longer to like cover a whole area. I just want to stipple this on so that we can kind of see the orange through it. Like in between, I guess, the little bristle marks, not necessarily through the yellow as I was just discussing. But I want spaces in between my little dabs here. And that occurs by using less paint, so that less paint is coming off with each tap, and the bristles are just kind of very lightly touching and removing a little paint from the brush onto the canvas. You can see I'm adding this yellow on the left-hand side if you're checking out where I'm adding it. And we don't really have an official light source in this painting. There is no sun, you know, in our painting. I'm just imagining it somewhere up here. So on that note, if you want to change the direction that your light is coming from, you absolutely can. You can uh, be flexible with that. I would just keep it consistent wherever it is, of course. So I've chosen that my sunshine is up here. So all of my light colors are going to be more on the left-hand side. So my yellow is on the left. When I add some yellow to this, it's going to be kind of top and left area, just to really showcase the highlight. <clears throat> Oh, you use the Crayola brand. That's interesting. I don't know if I've ever tried their paints. Love their markers, though. <laughs> For bullet journaling, I use their uh, Crayola Super Tips. But yeah, I would imagine you're in the same situation as me, then, Eds, and I would assume Crayola makes more, like, student-grade acrylics. And that makes sense. You might need to use that white in there. Had to chase down a fly. She's terrified, just, like, small little guys? Oh... Grok sleeping too. Good night, Grok. Have a good sleep. <clears throat> That's so sad about Lily Fox. I'm sure there's... <laughs> it's hard to avoid flies is all I'm saying. <laughs> okay, so I've added yellow to the orange tree. And I'm going to do the same thing to the green tree. 
yellow acts as a nice highlight for both orange and green because yellow is made to mix um you used to make excuse me both orange and green so we can use yellow as a highlight for both so i'm just going to start stippling that yellow on top again kind of sticking to the left it looks like in the original i even did a little extra on top as well and that's fine if our light source is kind of top left you know you might get a little more light on the very top of the tree so feel free to highlight that a little extra but again just using a small amount of paint on my brush so just tapping it into the yellow yellow white mixture and then tapping it off beside me here just so when i stipple it comes off a little softer and you see all those nice little individual bristles as you tap Ooh. And if your green is a little wet still, that's okay. You can just make sure you're reapplying the paint to your brush a little faster, a little more often, and that way you can kind of pile that yellow on top of the green. But sometimes it works in our favor to have the green or the orange a little wet because you can kind of soften those in-between areas. If you find anything's a little too blotchy, you can kind of start to tap into your green and then into your yellow to soften up some areas. So feel free to play around with that as well. That can look very nice. I think I'll add a little more yellow. I'm just looking at the original here and it looks like I really added a bunch there. Really highlighted the top. I chose to make this tree nice and bright, so I'm going to do that here. Cool. We still have that nice dark side there and I will be adding a third color to both of those. So we can look forward to that next. All flies, they buzz around her ears. Oh, she will suddenly start shaking. Oh no, mom to the rescue, no kidding. I forgot to turn on that notification. I'm gonna do that now. There we go. All right. So yeah, in general, again, yellow is a nice highlight color to use for those two colors. And for trees specifically, yellow is always a nice one because, again, it's used to make green. So it makes sense as a nice highlight color on top of the green. Right? Oh, you'll see. Well, you can see, obviously, in the painting here. We have so many more fall colors. They're all beautiful. I love them, too. Too nice, too nice. So the third color that we're going to add to both of these is red. Um, and the idea being that red obviously can act as a little bit of a shadow for the orange. It just also shows different leaf colors, as Scaredy was saying, all the different fall colors, right? We want to get them all in there. Um, and I will be adding, it's hard to see, but there is a little bit of red kind of stippled on top of this one too. And once again, that's just my idea of like leaves maybe just starting to change. We can see little hints of red in certain trees, maybe they're mostly green, but they have a little red kind of sprinkled within them. So this guy is going to get lots of red. This one's going to get a little red. And both of those colors will help to kind of shade up the areas as well, just to add a little more dimension. So I'm going to go ahead with that now. I'm going to use that same brush I've been using. Large, flat, or sorry, <laughs> medium round. <laughs> There's only three brushes. <laughs> medium round. Grabbing my red paint. I'm not mixing it with anything, I'm just trying to move it on my plate, in case you're wondering what I'm doing there. There we go. It's kind of in a scary, scary zone over here. So same thing, applying some red, I'm going to tap it off a little. And then same idea, just kind of stipple that on as much or as little as I want. And I would say I'm mostly sticking this on the right hand side where it's a little darker, but you can cross over a little bit, maybe stipple on top of the yellows and see how that goes. That'll be cool to see those colors kind of mixed together. You can get some in-between oranges and just different shades. Again, the more shades the better, right? So we can see how that's starting to come together by adding the red. Just a nice bright color right on top. So mostly on that right hand side, maybe along the bottom too, that makes sense for shading, right? But again, you can really lightly stipple wherever you want. If you really like the idea of more of a changing red tree, Stipple this a little more if you want. Q 
cute. And then as I said, a little on the green tree, I won't go as hard with this one, but I kind of sprinkle maybe a little near the bottom or just in that darker area here. Once again, just gives a little variation of color. But I want to keep this tree mainly green, so I'm just adding a little bit, just stippling that red on a touch here and there. Yeah. That one in my original still looks very light. I think I just went very... <laughs> I went crazy with the yellow on that original one, so... You can always make it brighter if you want. There we go. That's fine. We don't want to add too much to that one. Okay, I'm going to leave those alone. I'll give all of you maybe a couple minutes at this point, because I know there is quite a few colors on those trees that we were stacking. And then we'll move right along here. I think next we're going to work on this side a little bit. Excuse me as I blow my nose. Excuse me. There we go. It is sweater weather, Scaredy. I um I've announced I announced weeks ago, <laughs> weeks ago on this stream that I have declared it's fall. Um, I know I was a little early according to the calendar, but I have decided it's fall, so I've been living the fall life for a while. AKA the sweater weather, sweater, <laughs> sweat, sweater, sweater, <laughs> sweater weather, sweater weather, the sweater weather life for a while here. I've decided when it's my fall, so it's been a good sweater weather life for a while here. Throw on your sweaters now, there's no rules, there's no rules had the heat wave only now cooling down. It's been really hot here too, actually. It's probably not the best idea for me to wear sweaters. It's still quite warm as well. But I do have some uh, some air that I can <laughs> have blowing at me in my apartment, thankfully. So I'd rather be cozy. I'd rather have my nice sweater sweaters with a little bit of a cooler space than deal with that heat. Oh my goodness. Let's zoom us in. I want to show you this other side here. So those are our trees. That's how those are looking. Yeah, you can see I just added more of that light, light yellow down here. We're going to get this tree on soon with this, uh, this area over here. Try and move it over a bit. There we go. Ah, that's why. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's been abnormally hot. I don't know what the, uh, what's the plan coming up? I don't know. What, uh, what's the projection for how fall's gonna be? I wonder if fall's gonna be way warmer than usual as well. Or if we're gonna see a cold snap. I feel like more and more those nice in-between seasons just aren't existing as much, unfortunately. Like spring and fall. It just seems like it goes from summer right to winter recently. Weather, 115 degrees. Aaron, sweater weather, drinking hot coffee. Yep, yeah, it's the life. <laughs> Burning some nice candles. Yeah, drinking some warm drinks. Everything's fine. Changing out my wardrobe for the winter wardrobe. Just kidding, it always stays the same. <laughs> what is 115 in uh, Celsius? probably hot. Oh, a solid 46. That's more of a heat wave than I have been experiencing, to be fair. <laughs> oh my gosh. Lurking for a bit. No worries, Iwix. No worries. Yeah, and everything pumpkin. Exactly. Bring in all the chai, the spice, the lattes. Chai spice lattes, pumpkin spice lattes, all of it. I have tea that's like little pumpkin themed, fall themed. From David's tea, they they sell a um I think it's pumpkin chai. So it's chai tea, but then they have cute tiny little like sugar pumpkins in there. They all just dissolve, of course. They're like the little dino eggs in the oatmeal, but it's fun to see the little pumpkins for a moment. <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> I don't know why I said that because I really don't change out anything. Everything just kind of makes its way to the top of the pile again. Like when it's summertime, I'll have the shorts on top of my longer pants, and then they kind of just naturally switch in my drawers. 
Yeah, I'm not that organized. <laughs> it's not like I have a bin of winter stuff that I change out. It's just in the drawers. <laughs> we have red brown, so let's start with that. And then we can add our nice big green tree in the middle here. Middle of this area. So let's mix together red with a little bit of yellow and then our black. So essentially we're making a brown again. We're just kind of keeping it more red toned, I guess. So I'm adding more red. And that way it's going to show up on top of this other brown that we made. So you can see I'm really loading in the red there, adding maybe a little yellow and then some black. So you can see much more of like a red tone brown versus our deep dark brown. Okay. Dot, 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 dot. We're going to dot that on here just to create a little bit of a different color on the ground here. So same thing, kind of stippling or tapping my brush just as usual. <laughs> Isn't it delicious looking? And just covering that so we get a little bit of a variation versus this area here. So more of a red brown tapping away. There we go. Cool. And you can see I didn't fill up the whole spot. If you fill up the whole spot, that's okay. I was just leaving a little gap because we will be putting a tree here eventually. So no point in like filling that up right now. It is, it's very pie shaped. With hair, excuse me. Yuck. Very like saucer, UFO. Yeah, nice deep pie. Any of those work. <laughs> I don't know why it's a. Uh, I thought I was the only one who wanted to eat paint. Thought that paint was yummy. Okay, so that was the red. We're going to leave the wheatgrass for a little later. Because it kind of goes on top of our tree, so we want to make sure that's added uh, a little later. We're not worried about it now. So we can move right along to our tree. We have like a nice big tree to put up over here. Is the plate heavy yet? I wouldn't say it's heavy. It's got a, got a long way to go to get anywhere close to our old volcano plate. I can uh, weigh it a little later, maybe, and see. But yeah, it's still it's still manageable. I do rest it on my lap, but lifting it up isn't so hard. <laughs> yeah, just like mom's pie, extra hair, exactly. All right, so I'm going to mix together a nice green again. We're going to get a nice kind of like dark green going for the base of this tree. Once again, we only want to use yellow and blue to make it more of a bright green. Sorry, I'm trying to show you my plate here. There we go. So that was just yellow and blue mixed together. And you can see that's going to be the base for our nice big tree on the right, on the right. And this one's kind of a different tree. We don't use the stippling effect this time. I'm going to use more like individual brush strokes, but I'm going to start just by throwing on a nice vertical line. Ta-da! There we go. Just to kind of show the direction of where the tree's going and where it's being placed. Ah, thank you, Vonda. And then what I'm doing with my brush so I'm just doing kind of like small individual strokes. So rather than going straight at the canvas and tap, tap, tapping, I'm going to start just using kind of the tip of my brush or the side of my brush. I'm just adding small little strokes like this. They end up looking like little ovals almost. And I like to point them either going up, kind of like up the tree, or kind of angled to the sides as if they're coming out from the tree. But same idea in that we want to make a nice triangular shape. So we're starting very, very like thin and pointed up here. And then the side of the tree is going to angle down like this to get a nice wide base. Christine, hey, thank you for following the channel. Doing our nice acrylic painting tutorial right now. I hope you're enjoying. 
Okay, so again, just using kind of the tip or the side of the brush, doing small brush strokes, kind of filling up the tree space here and trying to make a slightly wider base as we go down. So you can see I'm pointing these little brush strokes kind of out like this and bring them further out as well. I'm just filling in the tree by doing small little brush strokes all kind of beside or on top of each other. And a tree starting to form. So just a slightly different way to make the tree rather than tapping my brush, just kind of using little brush strokes. Bring it all the way down. And same thing, we'll be adding some highlights and stuff to this a little later. For now, we're just using the green. And to get even more like fancy detailed with the tree shape, you can make kind of um, indications of branches coming out just by bringing a couple little extra brush strokes further out like that. So we're kind of making what looks to be a little branch there, not like a thin empty branch, you know, it's just going to be a branch that's filled up with greenery. So kind of like this, kind of creating like small little points that come out. I like to kind of angle them kind of coming up as well. So like they're maybe attached and kind of flipping up a little bit at the ends. Made a pumpkin pie. Oh, without the sugar. That's no good. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, hopefully everyone's seeing and understanding that. Kind of bring out a couple extra brush strokes just to get some separation, right? Just so it's not as much of a straight line as these guys. We allowed that because they're really far away. We don't want to spend too much time detailing those. But for trees that are closer, you just might want to give it a little extra detail by throwing in again some little branches coming out, creating some little gaps in between. Makes it a little more, a little more natural. We all tried to be super nice. No one commented. Oh, that's the worst <laughs> till a friend ate it. And then they said, oh, and then we said, oh, I forgot the sugar. <laughs> you waited. <laughs> no warnings. That's nice of everybody, though. <laughs> nice enough to not say much. It's like, okay. So just giving another minute or two here on just the green and then we can add our nice little highlight again we'll be adding some yellow you can see it on the side here as our nice little highlight and christine i see you in the chat thank you welcome in very pretty first time catching you are these available watching like, yes they are thanks for asking uh if you go to my youtube scaredy has got YouTube. Yep, available on YouTube. Yeah, um, I have a YouTube channel full of free step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials. Uh, and I have lots posted already, like, I think 80 plus. I always say 70 plus, but I think I must be above 80 now. Um, so if you're wanting to paint right now, you just don't know what to paint, lots there. And then this painting, um, I'll be uploading to that channel within the next week. So I air it live on Twitch first. So if you, if you know your way around Twitch, you could always, I just, I guess, just come back here to watch it because the VOD will be available. Um, but I always re-upload it to YouTube as well, just so they're all in one solid space. So yeah, I hope that works for you. Cool, thanks, adding on each. Perfect, yeah, you can subscribe for free, obviously, you know that. I don't even think I have the option to, I guess YouTube is now introducing a way to subscribe for a fee, or like become a member, I guess they call it. I don't even know if I have that turned on. <laughs> Either way, yes, just uh, feel free to subscribe. Get some free content there. I don't know how a lot of the YouTube stuff works, honestly. It's just a way for me to, uh, as I described, kind of like repost all of my tutorials. So they're, in the, they're in one solid space for everybody versus working through my VODs and trying to figure out where in the VODs uh, the tutorials are. Okay. 
So let's add some yellow on top of our greenery here to get a nice highlight on our tree. That'll also help us kind of see the branches a bit better. Okay. So I'm going to mix together. Oh, I need more yellow on my plate. Excuse me. My palette's getting messy. Getting some yellow mixed with white again. Vonda, you're gifting so much today. Christine, you're a bun automatically now. Vonda's gifted you a subscription. Thank you, Vonda. So I've got my yellow white mixture. So the same idea as when I was adding yellow to the other trees there. Okay. And I'm just going to add that in small amounts on again, the left hand side of the tree. So where the highlights are going to go using the same technique, I'm kind of using either the side or the tip of my brush. And I'm just doing small little brush strokes. You can see I'm keeping the brush strokes a little more spread apart. Almost kind of like they're little dots on the tree, right? They're almost just like little, little patches and dots of highlight. Very loose. You can see almost piling them a bit heavier just on the very tips. And then doing just a couple kind of falling off towards the middle there. And you can see it kind of helps us see the tree of course on top of the green background so that'll help as well if you feel like especially near the top if your tree is kind of getting lost just dotting on a little bit of that yellow really helps us see the tree again so even if you want to yeah stick it more so near the top as well you can absolutely do that And again, you can see I'm just kind of softly moving that yellow around, maybe blending it a tiny bit. If your green is still wet, you can kind of allow the yellow to mix in. But mainly I am trying to just get that yellow resting right on top. Getting that tree nice and highlighted. There we go. Yeah, that looks better there. Okay, so I'll leave you for a minute or two for that tree. And then we'll add the other details a little later on with this section here. <clears throat> they have that Instagram too, but I think you need a certain follow. Oh, I didn't know that. You can pay, is it like to access the Instagram or? Cause I know for YouTube, it's like paying to access um, if you wanna do like members only videos and things like that, you know? Special like behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, no worries, Christine. Yeah, I've been doing this for years. So that's why there's that's why there's a huge amount on there right now. And I'll just keep adding. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to check out YouTube later uh, in the week because I'm having trouble keeping up. No worries. Yeah, I know this is a little bit of a longer painting as well. Lots to uh, lots to go through. So if you want to check it out another time, absolutely. Sure. Yeah, if you want to keep watching. That way I can um, answer some questions as you um, as you get them, I guess. And then that way when you're re-watching, you'll hear me <laughs> answer those questions that you might have now. That'll help you... Uh, Remember, I'm sure as we're as we're going along, as you're painting along, I guess on YouTube. Okay, maybe one more minute on that. I don't want to rush too much here. It sounds like some of you are having trouble keeping up. Want to make sure I'm not rushing too much through this. So I'll give another minute or two, give some catch up time.
Um, yeah, I always welcome um, Edson if you have any questions like after the tutorial or just about painting questions. Um, yeah, I welcome that for sure. I try my best to help out as much as I can. Oh, you decided, Scaredy? I think that's a good idea. It sounds like you were you were wanting it for sure. Yeah, no worries. Anytime. Especially during my other live streams when I'm just kind of like casually painting or doing other things. Um, good time to ask me whatever you want. I've got so much time to uh, to help you out then for sure. Okay, now that we have that tree tackled, let me think of where we want to go now. Uh, we probably want to start working on this area here a little bit or even let's add the rocks and then we can move up. So we've had, yeah, we've had time to add our nice blue water kind of as our base. Um, Asteria, thank you for following. Welcome in. Uh, we have our nice blue base. So now what we can do is we can add some of the rocks that we can see kind of like hiding almost. They're a little more prominent, of course, at the bottom, but just a couple more in the middle, even up here to continue this whole like rushing water and the water going on top, things like that. So my idea is that we're going to add the rocks now. And then we can go on top with all this nice kind of wispy white and the, the foam and the, the mist and all of that and kind of cover them up again. So when we add them now, they will look very like bold. They're going to look like polka dots, you know, but once we add all of our other blues and uh, whites on top, they'll start to cover up nicely. All right. So I'm going to use my medium round. Uh, and I'm mixing together more brown. Maybe you have brown already mixed from all the other browns that we've used here. But otherwise, I am just mixing another kind of deep, dark brown here. So I'm using red, yellow, and some black. Just creating a nice deep chocolate brown like we were using for the bases there. And once I add that deep dark brown, I can start to add in our little rocks, which I kind of described as little polka dots almost. Um, rocks in the water, uh, they uh, I, I add them so that they're nice and round on the tops and I have a nice horizontal kind of flat bottom. So here's an example here. I'll add a couple up here just to show. So a nice horizontal bottom so you can start with a nice straight line. And then just do a little bit of a bump along the top. So a nice straight bottom and a little little bump on the top. So as if the rock is kind of like peeking out of the water. And I know right now it's going to look like this rock is kind of resting or floating on the water. But when we add all of our whites, as I keep saying, our whites and our other blues and other steps there, it'll make it look more like the, the rock is in the water. There we go. So I'm just going to do that a few times. I'm going to do a couple of rocks kind of near the top here. Um, I added a couple like small guys in here, which I know look again, a little out of place, but they are here because it'll allow us to add some kind of like wispy waterfall looks as if the water's kind of shooting above and on top of the rock. So I will add some right where the water's beginning to kind of fall away into the waterfall look. <clears throat> and the other spots I'm adding you can see are just in this dark blue area I'm going to keep adding here horizontal little bump gaming hello Thank you for following and welcome in. Doing a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial right now. If you're interested in learning, let me know. Um, and then Asteria, so fun to paint with you. Is this on Zoom too? What platform can I use? You can use YouTube. Let me uh, give you a little information in the chat here. There we go. So I have more on YouTube. Um, and I guess if you're asking about Zoom, I do have paid tutorials, which you're welcome to check out. Those are through Zoom, but they are at a cost, just $15 a ticket. Uh, feel free to check out those ones there. Mm -hmm. 
That's cute, Vonda. Doo -doo 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 -doo. But if only here, I just made an account here. Oh yeah, so my live streams happen here. This is where you can watch me paint live. But I just have other spaces where I put the recorded videos if you want, or like you asked, if you have Zoom, that'll be a different space, right? So yeah, whatever works for you. If you made an account here, that works as well. You can watch my tutorials here too. There's just different things going on in different spaces. Okay, and uh, back to just describing where I'm putting these rocks. You can see I'm really loading up the rocks near the bottom of the painting. And again, you can kind of see that in the original design. I've put a bunch of rocks near the bottom because again, it'll allow us to do um, kind of show the water rushing on top and above these rocks here. It's a kind of a cool look and a cool effect. That's kind of what happens during waterfalls, right? You can kind of see the rocks a little bit more through the water as it's rushing down. So I thought it was nice to add a bunch of these ones especially down here, right? So feel free to really stack them up around here on the bottom. Cool, you can see once again, trying to keep with the flatter bottoms and the nice rounded tops. So again, they look like they're kind of floating above for now. Thank you, Frey. Oh, ARP. Um, this is the dark brown. So the same brown that we were using for these areas here. I just mixed together more of the red, yellow, black mixture and created a nice deep brown using that. Okay, so I'll give once again a couple minutes for those rocks. We can just keep placing those at your own pace. And then I'm gonna move us back up to here. We're gonna to start to clean this area up because it's still looking like a big mass right now. It's not looking like it has much dimension. So I'll show us how to throw some highlights on here. And uh, yeah, then we'll just be kind of adding some extra details. We got the river. Yeah, no worries, no worries. Still given some time, just in case, just in case. Maybe like one more minute and then I'll move us on to here. Uh, Edson says, it's interesting how the various elements change as your uh, details are added. Oh yeah, um, that's the other reason I love doing the, these tutorials, even if people aren't necessarily painting along or getting enjoyment out of painting. Um, it's just a good way to showcase how paintings can really change um, throughout the process, how we all kind of start with this messier looking painting, you know? And then as we add more, it just gets better and better and better, right? Um, Jan, thank you for the official follow. I know you've been watching, um, but thank you for following. Um, yeah, it just showcases how we really have to like kind of push through to get to the final result, right? We can't judge a painting too quickly. It's very easy for people to get frustrated as they paint and be like, it's just not looking right, but it's kind of the point. It's not going to look right for a long time <laughs> until you're like right near the end, right? So even now that we have some more like finished details on, 
the whole painting itself still looks kind of a mess and not quite what we want, of course. Um, but yeah, as you said, it just looks better and better or just different as various elements are added. Thank you, Vonda. Sounds good, Scaredy. I'll see you later. Because, yeah, even like at this stage, for example, we're like, what's going on here? Why are there polka dots on top of our water? But when we add just one more layer of stuff, it's going to look completely different. Mm hmm. All right, so let me, as I said, kind of move you to this section here. So if we see into our original, just kind of looking in here behind this tree. Um, I didn't do a whole lot here. I just kind of added some lighter browns, just kind of like blocking them in as if we have some like very flat rock almost that's kind of creating some highlights from the light. Uh, so creating, excuse me, like a beige light brown. And I'll just be kind of splicing that in on top of our dark brown. And that's then what's going to showcase um, kind of the top layer from the side layer is when we start to add this grass, we can add some right along the side, but also kind of growing up along this very um, kind of steep edge we have here. So it's still going to look a little like one solid piece for a bit until we add a couple other elements there. So let's mix together that kind of beige color and we can start to block that in and make this look a little more like a cliff rather than one solid brown shape. Um, oh, I need some white. So I'm going to mix together white. It's kind of like a little opposite of brown, but kind of the same. We're going to mix together white, a little bit of yellow, and a little bit of red. So similar to brown in that we use yellow and red, but we're just using white instead of black. And that's going to get us more of a beige color. So you can see how that, oops, my hair is blocking. You can see how that red and yellow mixing in is getting us to more of like a nice sandy color, nice beige color. And that's what we're going to use for kind of that top edge for those nice highlights. And again, I can test it, see how it's looking on top. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. Maybe a little more color, a little more red and yellow. You can just add small amounts of red and yellow until you get a beige you like. I'm going for a little more of a, you can see like a darker beige. It's not like a sandy, like light, light beige color. Maybe a little more red. There we go. And I'm just going to add this in in uh, blocks. Kind of just blocking it in with very sharp edges. I'm not trying to blend it at all. You can see it's very, yeah, very straight, straight edges, straight shapes, sharp edges. And kind of starting in the middle here with this weird shape kind of coming out like this. More of a triangular shape. I can kind of use this to create an edge if I want. So if I want the edge of my cliff to be kind of like right around here. I'm just going to lightly throw a line in to kind of show that edge, show that this is going to come straight down. This is coming out like this. And again, it doesn't really showcase that yet. It will a little later. Yeah, these shapes, I'm not honestly putting anywhere super in particular. I'm just kind of looking at my original and trying to replicate what I have to get it as similar to that as possible. But really, again, all I'm doing is trying to get some sharp, angular shapes in there to make it look like Again, this uh, this rock face is very straight edged, lots of flat surfaces where some highlights are popping off. <clears throat> oh, I'm missing some chats here. Let me see. Where do you get the music from? You play in the background? It's on Spotify. I believe it's just under free copyright free music. I can always send that later if you're interested. Hello, James. Good to see you. Iwix, no worries. Have a good evening. We both need water. And with that, good night. Good night. Glad you're here too. Glad you enjoyed. But yeah, welcome in, James. Good to see you. We're just in the middle of a nice toot right now. Classic toot. Trying to get a nice fall scene going. How have you been? 
When using acrylics, you can make changes without waiting eons of time. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, Edson. It sounds like you know a little bit about the oil paint. That's pretty much... There's a couple reasons why I don't really gravitate towards oils, but that's one of them. I, uh, I really like being able to stack things on top of one another. If I make a mistake, I can just kind of fix it up as I go very quickly, as you said, without waiting eons, you know? <laughs> eons, that's a great word. With those, you can't do that. I know there's mediums that you can use to, um, like, speed up the drying process, but yeah, it just gets too complicated at that point. I'm like, why, why do you need to add more? <laughs> They're just not for me. I feel like I can blend just fine with acrylics. I don't need the extra time, I just do it fast, you know? Quick, quick, quick. Okay, so yeah, a little bit of an interesting rock here, a little more... I don't want to say abstract than usual, but um, just with those big bold highlights on top, you know? It is a little more different than usual. And I still don't really like this color, I'm just gonna add a little more red to it and see if I can pop on top. Yeah, that's a little better. This is just a little too bright for my liking, so I'm changing mine. I'm trying to get it closer to the original. <sighs> been good, how about you? I've been good too. Just taking things slow, you know, still doing only one a week, one stream a week. Although, oh, excuse me, this is two a week. Hello, this is our second stream. Hello. Streaming on Tuesday again, so... But yeah, it's been good to kind of take it slow, so that's what I've been up to, just figuring things out, you know? But overall, decent, good. It's a pleb! Hey, pleb! How's it going, dude? Really good to see you. I know you popped in the Discord. I saw you post some inspo pics a while back when I was offline, so apologies. <laughs> I wasn't responding much to anything in Discord. But it's really good to see you here. Welcome in. We're doing a, uh, a toot, as per usual. Not usual, usual, but as you're probably familiar with, you know about the toots. What is, uh, any updates on your end? How has life been the last five months or so when I've been offline and not able to, uh, catch up with people? <clears throat> Alright, that's a little better there. Again, have a different- a little bit of a different look for the rocks, but that's what I went with for this painting. Something a little more... I don't want to say abstract, but again, I keep thinking that. A little more abstract. So the other thing we're going to be doing to this rock to really show that this is more of a vertical rather than horizontal, we'll be adding some very dark brown. Dark, 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 dark on top of here. That'll help make a little more shading here. Which I think we'll do next, so I'll just leave you with this for another minute or two before moving on to that. One step at a time. For real, yeah. I, uh, I'm someone who doesn't like to do that, though. <laughs> now that I feel good, I'm like, I just want to get back into everything, but I'm kind of forcing myself to go nice and slow, so it's probably for the best, yeah. Two steps at a time is jumping. It is. It is. So I'm trying to even say no to that. <laughs> oh no, you needed it. I'm still working through a lot, but I'm glad to see you too. Uh, so glad. Hey, you got a little... That's our favorite goose right now, that hype train goose. He's so cute. Just screaming with happiness. <laughs> you have him too. I'm so glad. <clears throat> now that so tail change you are making is exactly what I meant. Um, oh yeah, you mean like adding on top. Right, right, right. You can just change things as you go. Yeah, and that's the great thing. You can choose to change it while it's wet or while it's dry. Both work. Versus oil, it's like you're kind of forced to let it dry at points, and that can be very frustrating. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so I was pointing out down here, you can see like minimally how it's a lot darker on this side here. So we want to add a little bit of a darker color to really make sure we can get that nice shading down here to make it look a little more vertical. So I'm using more black, <laughs> more, 
more black, believe it or not, and I'm mixing that into my brown to make it pretty much black, but still a little hint of brown. That's why I am mixing it into the brown. I don't want to use pure black because it's not the darkest area in the world. It's just like deeper, darker than up here. So I'm trying to make a very deep dark brown that almost looks black, but you can see it's slightly lighter. It's still a little more of that brown tone. And I'm going to add this vertically in here. And that'll help show that this, uh, this wall is a little more vertical, up and down. I think I'll actually straighten this out as a result to showcase that. Giving us a little more a little more of an idea of what this shape is doing. What this piece of land is doing, what this rock is doing. Things are slowly getting better. It took a while to get my head on straight. It's a, it's a process for everybody, Pleb. I feel like especially recently there's been a lot of just kind of self-care needed for everybody, a lot of time away needed for everybody. I felt it, obviously. So I feel ya, I feel ya, one step at a time, slowly getting better. That's how I try and think of it every day. As long as there's at least improvement, or even just like a flat line, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid the downward, but that could happen too, here and there. But yeah, it's good to try and just take it slow, it's a good mindset to be in. Oops. Oh, enjoy your dinner, Allie. You can see I'm just kind of playing with this a little as I go along. If something looks kind of off in terms of direction or the color, I'm trying to, for example, add some dark brown coming up here as if there's some shading kind of below on this edge here. Yeah, if something you think makes a little more sense, you can, of course, alter and move your browns around. Who's that? James getting a subscription. Oh, to Pleb. Thanks, James. That's very nice. Pleb, you're a bun again. <laughs> again! You're back to bun land. Thank you, James. Very nice. Some drying additives for oil. Yeah, I, I don't even want to deal. <laughs> I don't want to deal. <laughs> I actually owned some drying stuff for oils that time when I tried oil painting for a bit. Um, didn't matter. <laughs> And oil, you just paint 27 at a time. That's the other thing. I never got used to the idea of having multiple paintings going, you know? So that did not help me. I like to have one going for a while, I guess. Yeah, do it, Pleb. If you find yourself with some supplies. I bet there's lots on, like, Facebook Marketplace and stuff right now. People kind of decluttering and all that. Mm-hmm. Hype dog. Oh, my dog. All right, just looking at what we're doing next here. Actually, while we have the brown, I have one more step for us. Okay. So I've added that brown, as I said, kind of on the bottom of this large brown area here to kind of showcase the cliff going downwards. This is our flat top, a little more flat like this. This one goes straight down. While we have this brown, small detail, small detail, but I added some kind of like sticks going up in front of our tree here, just to add something a little more interesting on top of the green. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that same brown I was just using, same brush as well, that same medium round brush. Just going to do a couple kind of straight-ish, thin-ish lines poking up on top of the tree. Again, very minor detail if you'd rather have the tree kind of have its moment here. Without anything blocking it, you can of course leave it. But I just kind of liked at least one more little layer of things before we add our little wheat grass on top. So again, just using the tip of my brush, I was just kind of swiping upwards. Just a small amount of pressure. And the small amount of pressure will help us get just the very tip of the brush on there. There we go. We'll just keep it like that. Nothing fancy. You can see these are not the straightest and the cleanest lines. But yeah, it's more so just a nice little background feature. It'll be a little more background once we add our nice big branch in front. Just something to add on top of our green tree. 
Put an ad in Facebook Marketplace when we're looking for supplies. All the COVID painters probably have a That's exactly what I was thinking. I bet there's a lot of people decluttering right now. Maybe painting didn't stick for some people and they want to sell off some things and that makes sense. So yeah, I would say it's probably a good time to look. Thrift store. Oh yeah, that works too. I've heard people um, score some big canvases at thrift stores like big size wise and uh, those can be expensive at art stores so keep your eye out for those too if you ever want to make like big paintings check your local thrift shops or like big canvases that have like a tiny amount of damage that you wouldn't even really see once you paint something on it yeah tons of good stuff like that surround by the group help me out of situation really give them money there you go yeah giving back that's really nice that's good. Yeah, anything artistic, I'm sure, is a great release. I found the same thing with painting once I got a little more back into it, a little more capable, for sure. Okay. Checking the time. Nine o'clock. So we're two hours in. I would think this will take another half an hour, maybe 45. Just as a heads up for everybody. Again, I know I said at the start this would be a little bit of a longer painting. So just want to keep everybody oh this is a little off to the side here there we go uh yeah just want to keep everybody informed on what to expect yeah longer too for sure though <clears throat> princeton brushes for michaels oh yeah yeah i sent you that amazon link if you wanted it for sure oh and frames too yep i've absolutely bought frames from stores edson you can spray paint them to whatever color you need, make them all matching. Yeah. Sorry, there's still a fruit fly in here. <laughs> he just won't leave me alone. Ah, <sighs> just buzzing around. Okay. All right, so we have one more, I would say one more main element to kind of the background or side areas here, which is this little wheatgrass kind of stuff that you see, again, hanging on to the side, hanging on to the, I don't know why this just doesn't scroll as well. I don't want to mess with this too much. Um, anyway, yeah, wheatgrass here, 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 here. Really anywhere you want, but I just thought it was a nice little space filler kind of to show some direction growing up here or growing along the side here. I thought that was a good indicator of, again, the shape of this rock. So let's add our wheatgrass and then we can get to, I think, one of the more exciting parts, which is cleaning up the water, making it look more, you know, fluid, like it's running, like it's rushing. Uh, we'll be doing that after this next step. All right, so first the wheatgrass. I'll keep calling it the wheatgrass. I'll move my mouse for you. We have this large flat brush, excuse me, medium round brush. I've done that twice now. <laughs> Calling my brushes different names. Uh, and we're going to mix three colors once again. <laughs> Yellow, tiny bit of red, and a tiny bit of white. Similar to the beige we were making here, the difference being that we're not using as much white. The white's just kind of a small little extra in there. It's mostly going to be yellow and a small amount of red. So essentially we're making like, not a beige, but maybe like a light golden yellow, light, very light orange you could think of this as. But yeah, a little brighter than a beige, a little more like golden versus a beige. A beige is very muted, very, very light. This is gonna be more like a gold, yeah. Lots of yellow, little red, little white. I'll catch up and chat in a second. Sorry, everybody. Want to get this step on first. You might just be chatting amongst yourselves too, and that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, nice kind of like golden wheat color. Lots of yellow, little red, little white. Just applying that to my medium round brush, just on the very tip here. And very similar to these sticks, just like smaller versions. So just using the very tip and doing small, quick little strokes going up. And I'm almost flicking the brush on the way up too, so I'm kind of moving my handle down, the bristles come up, and kind of flick the bristles off of the canvas so that they're only touching for a little bit, then flicking right off. That's how you get some nice little wispy, wispy strokes, wispy, straight, sharp strokes. Flick, 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 flick. You can do some tiny ones if you want, just to show some like indications of the little wheatgrass. 
And like I said, I kind of like putting this along the edge just to kind of show where that edge is. So just small little bits here and there and bigger bits if you want. I also like to throw a couple down here just as if they're like growing up the wall a little bit or just on small little, you know, ridges or edges that might exist. I thought that was a nice little detail just to bring a little light down here. And even though we don't really paint the edges in, it almost looks like they are resting on little ledges. I like to fill them up with uh, this side too. So on the right hand side, throwing some wheatgrass on there. You can see it just adds another color to whether or not it's like wheatgrass you're adding. This nice golden color is just a really nice color to incorporate anyway. Even if you use it in a tree or something. Maybe I'll just throw a little extra kind of along these little ridges here. See that? I think that looks nice and cute. Add as much or as little as you want. In my original, you can see I mostly just added down here. I went a little funny up there with my extras, but yeah, add as much or as little as you like. If you really like that color, could be a nice thing to continue to add. You could even like fill up up here if you wanted. Okay, I've got a minute to catch up on chat here, so I'll leave you all with this right here for a minute or two. And then we're gonna get to the river! Oh my goodness, we can clean up the river. <clears throat> Rock bottom is hella good fuel for creativity. It's, um, yeah, kind of for me, for me anyway, it's different for everyone, I'm sure. I think the come up was good. Um, I, I could not create when I was rock bottom. I didn't want to create. I was stressed about the idea. I wasn't inspired by anything. Nothing was enjoyable. Um, so for me, it, it, I'm sure, yeah, the way you say it kind of works both ways there, that at least going to rock bottom and working back up is really good for, uh, for fueling creativity too. But I know sometimes people fuel off of the sad parts too, which I just didn't find personally, <laughs> unfortunately. I was like, why isn't this happening? <laughs> back into playing? Playing what, James? Sure, what would you like to name them? Zach, hey, good to see you. Welcome in. We're just uh, kind of on the, the later half of our toot here. You can see it kind of coming together. We have a couple more foreground elements to add, but almost there. So welcome in to you. How have you been, Zach? Do you sketch before you paint at all? You know, for brainstorming. Not usually. I used to, Pleb. Um, I have a little handy iPad um, that I own, and I used to like sketch out like color palette, not ideas, but like using certain colors and just kind of blocking in shapes to kind of get an overall view but honestly i found it was the same as just painting on a canvas like if you see the start of this painting for example when i upload it i kind of use the brush just to sketch out things and it just helps me visualize where things are going um but in terms of like planning it no <laughs> i i just use references i guess i do have references so maybe that kind of acts as my sketch i think that makes sense it is what you meant. Okay, the come up's what I meant. No spark when I was at bottom. Interesting. So yeah, you were same as me. Again, though, I, I do feel like I hear people talk about how, like, they create the best music when they were sad, and I'm like, really? <laughs> that's, uh, that's some crazy power you have, you know? <laughs> crazy motivation that it stuck around during the tough time, because for me it was gone. Yeah, that was the scariest part. <clears throat> this one's Billy. Billy the brush. The naming's fun though. I know a lot of people who name their brushes, especially for instructing and teaching and then they refer to brushes as certain names. I find it too confusing sometimes though. <laughs> if the names don't make sense, like where did you pull this name from? <laughs> All right, let me zoom in on this water a little bit and I can talk to you about what we're going to do here. So for the final steps of the water, we're kind of using two different colors. Um, we're using white, just pure white, um, but we're using a small amount of that. We're using more of this kind of like light blue gray color. And the reason we don't want to use too much white is because if we were to add the white everywhere where there's like a little bit of motion and a little bit of mist and whatnot, it's going to look way too bright. It's going to look like the highlights are kind of lost. Everything's white. Nothing's really standing out. So we want to save the white for just a couple different areas. And I kind of chose this middle area here for more of the white, maybe a couple tiny little splotches up here. And you can see there's not a lot else that's like really, really 
popping out at us in terms of pure white. If we really look for white, white, white. Not a whole lot. Or just like tiny little bits. If you really look tough or hard though, you can see a lot of this is more of the blue-gray color. So lighter than what we have, but not quite white. So it's not going to wash out the whole painting and make it look like, you know, there's no real highlights. So that's the key. And it will be the key with our water painting later on too. The water painting I made for like a month from now. Anyway. It's, uh, I've been finding more and more, the more I really look at certain colors, we kind of think, oh, that's white, but it's not white. It's going to be like an off-white or a gray white or something like that. And that really helps make things look a little more accurate, I would say. So let's start by mixing our kind of like gray blue white, just the off-white. And then what we'll do is we'll take the pure white and stack that on top to really get some beautiful highlights. Okay, let's see here. I need more white on my plate. But I will be mixing white with a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of black. So quite literally, it becomes what I was describing, like a light blue-gray. <laughs> We're making a gray with blue in it. We're making a light blue with some gray in it. So I have my white. I'm grabbing a tiny bit of blue. Because again, we still want this really light we want it to look like just a just a shade darker than white almost. So a little bit of blue and a little bit of black. So you can kind of see some blue in there. You can kind of see a gray in there, just something in between. But as a whole, you can see it's like very, very light color. Like if you look at all of my plate here, there's white, there's this color and everything else pretty much. So still a very, very pale color. Okay. And we're going to use this softly. So we want to make sure that we apply some to our brush. I am using the same brush, by the way, in case anyone was wondering, that medium round brush. I'm applying it and then once again, wiping it off a little bit. That way there's only a little bit of paint on my brush and I'm not worried about it blobbing off anywhere. And I'm going to start just by very lightly kind of wisping left and right with this, right on top of the blue. I'm choosing to start by going right where my rocks are, because I find this helps, as I was describing before, it helps kind of allow the rocks to sink into the water. It makes it look more like the rocks are in the water rather than resting right on top like these guys. So again, that was a little bit of that color, wiping it off, very lightly swiping left and right. So your brush strokes will come off really kind of dry looking, um, very rough looking, and that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. We want it to be, you can see, not necessarily transparent. It's just like little pieces of paint, little tiny bits of paint are coming off, almost like rubbing off of the brush. Like that. So I'm just going to do that along the top here where the water is resting a little more. Oh, see, that was a lot of paint. That's what happens when you add a lot of paint to your brush. It comes off in a big blob. That's what I'm trying to avoid. So I just wiped my paint off. I'm going to wipe around it. Try and spread it out a bit. Yes, what I was saying before that happened is I'm just working in the top area right now. Just not adding too much of this. Just some little horizontal streaks here and there. You can see how it makes it look like the water's kind of moving. There's something going on. It's just not rushing anywhere. It's just still a little, being a little casual up here. Oh, and Play went for a lurk. Nom time. Enjoy your noms. <clears throat> We're all happy you're well in here. Yes, absolutely. That's what uh, taking time off means. <laughs> I can get back to what I want to do, you know? So I'm glad that worked. Okay, so I've added just small amounts up here. And now when we get further down, we just want to change the direction of where this is going. So we no longer want to do these horizontal strokes. We want to show that the water is kind of rushing down. So same idea. I want to make sure I'm grabbing the same color and wiping off a little wherever you want to. I'm wiping just on the table here. And then very lightly going to start wisping kind of down. Uh, I guess in a more of a curve because the water is going to kind of curve down. It kind of comes from the straight, straight across and it curves like this. So it's not just going to start and then 
come right down, it's going to slowly come over and then curve. So we can start showcasing that with this color by coming over and down, over and down. See that? So it really looks like it's like hitting a lip almost, then going coming down. And again, this is coming off very, very softly because I have almost no paint on my brush. And that's how we get kind of this rushing water look. Again, very soft, little amount of paint, just kind of grazing across. And you can see I'm also trying to do this specifically on top of my rocks. So that's what I was talking about before, how these rocks might look very uh, foreground right now, but as we add this rushing water on top, they're going to be covered up. And you can see I'm purposely doing that now. Because even as the water's like coming down all at once here, it might hit, you know, a rock on the way and might kind of spew out even more. So you can even start a couple of these curves like on a rock and then kind of spew out from there as if the water is shooting off one of those rocks, right? If anything, this one should probably shoot off even more because it's hitting a rock. And yeah, the mist might overlap, for example, this tree, which is okay because maybe the tree is kind of interfering with the, uh, with the waterfall a little bit, and that's all right. Or maybe it kind of goes on top of the ground area. It's just perspective. We're just kind of seeing through, right? So no, no worries if you overlap a little bit, that's okay. And I'm just slowly adding little bits at a time because we don't want to go overboard. We don't need to do this like in every single little spot. Just a little here and there until we have a nice moving waterfall, rushing waterfall. Getting this edge here. Getting some coming down here. Still just using kind of curves and quick little brush strokes. And if you ever go a little overboard, maybe you add a little too much and you're like, oh, I don't really like that highlight. You can always grab your darker blue if you have any left over, any of your background blues, and just kind of use that to cover up anything. Just kind of wisp it on wherever you need to and cover things up. So again, it's always best to try it and then you can always remove it or alter it a little bit later. And you can even see sometimes when there isn't even a rock, I might just kind of start a new curve kind of halfway down. Just again, makes it look like the water's kind of separating into slightly different streams or streams or hitting things that maybe we don't see. Hitting things on the rock wall, making the water kind of jump out a little bit. Extra curves here. It's looking pretty good. I don't want to do too much more because this is kind of one step of two. We kind of do these very quick curves, these very rushing looking pieces of water. I'm also going to add what I call like the mist as well. So the mist is going to come up and maybe cover a little bit. So I'm actually going to leave it here so you can see. You can still see lots of empty space here, lots of blue still, just small little wisps and areas of the water rushing down. So I'll just give you a minute or two on that just to see. And then I'll show you how to do kind of the misty, misty or almost like rough areas of the water where the water's maybe pooling and collecting and moving around a little bit more, creating some rougher areas in the water. But yeah, I hope everybody's enjoying this tutorial so far. I keep mentioning, I know it's a little bit of a longer one. I can, I keep peeking at the time and I'm like, whoa, I'm going way overboard, but Truly, this is uh, expected at this point of this painting. Just a little, uh, a little more detailed, a little more detailed than usual. But yeah, just so people know, I've been trying to do that a little more often because I am getting requests for that kind of stuff. I'm getting requests for paintings that take a little more time or a little more thought or might involve a little more technique. Um, 
so I do hope people are enjoying it. Exactly! Now the water's coming alive, as you said, Edson, with each kind of piece, it gets better and better. And even the water, I mean, <laughs> I really like the water in this painting, but it's still not even the very foreground. Like, we'll still be adding one more thing, which is that big branch coming right across, so... It's pretty crazy how this is still kind of background stuff, but yeah, I really enjoy it too, thanks. It's coming alive. That's what we want. We want the water to be alive. The water is not sitting still. It is very much moving. All right, let me show you what I was calling like the mist before. Mist or foam or anything like that. So in my original, just gonna point here. Kind of all in here. It's like where all the waterfalls coming down and like crashing into the water, creating a little bit of mist. That's what I call the mist or the foam in here. Any of the like little rougher bits. And that's just going to be taking our brush and creating kind of like little swirls with our brush to create more of like a cloudy look. So I'm going to keep using the same brush and the same color. So no need to switch anything here. I'm trying to grab... Oh, grabbed a little bit too much there. All right. Grabbing a little bit of that. Again, tapping or wiping off a little bit just so there's not a huge blob of paint. And I'm going to go kind of near the bottom of my waterfall, which is around here, just anywhere in this area. And I'm going to start swirling my brush. So once again, I have just a small amount of paint on here. And I'm doing small, tight little circles. And allowing that paint to kind of rub off. I describe it as the paint is kind of rubbing off or you're... Um, what else do I see? It's like, almost like it's scraping off of the brush. It's kind of a neat feeling. It's And it creates a very cool texture. And again, it creates not just transparency, but some nice little in-between spots where there isn't paint. It's, uh, yeah, just a nice way to give a nice little almost wash on top of everything, but in a controlled way. So small amounts of paint, just small tight little circles and you can see how I'm adding this kind of down here and then raising it up a little bit kind of traveling upwards just like mist would right it would kind of travel up a little bit so you're kind of doing two things you're creating yeah the rough kind of mist down here where all the water's hitting and then also bringing it up traveling upwards here and if you like this look you can kind of add it a little more if you need to even on the sides or as if mist is coming off some of the rocks here where the water's a little more rough. I'm just adding little amounts at a time. And keep in mind, again, we will be adding some white in this area as well, so if you feel like it doesn't look super, super bright right now, it will a little later. It will a little later, so give it a chance for now. This is just kind of the subtle, um, darker patch right now but we will be wanting to make it much lighter later. Again, it's all about layering. If we were to go in with straight white right now, it would be a little too much. We gotta put this layer down first and then we'll just add small little hints of white. So see how that's now covered up much more of our waterfall. Like I said, we don't have as much space anymore, just like empty space of blue, I guess. There we go. I think I'll continue this down a little further, maybe down here. Because yeah, the water's still kind of a little more rough down here where the waterfall is hitting the water. So I'm just going to move it a little further down. And I'm trying not to overlap because this mist is supposed to be behind this area here. So I'm just trying to be careful, but again, I can always go back and do a quick clean line a little later. It's okay to overlap this though. It makes sense that things might overlap a little on the right hand side. It's a little further back. Right? Look at that. Woohoo! So I'll once again give a minute or two for you to just see this, but just to give you a heads up, the idea is we'll continue this process down here. So we'll do a couple more like swipes just for small little mini waterfall areas. We'll do a little more mist. And then we got a couple more little waterfall areas down here as well. So just lots of layers. That was my goal with this to make lots of 
the little small layers where the river's doing a lot of different things rather than just one solid waterfall. Mm hmm. Christine says, I'm excited to follow along with this later. I've been attempting water lately and not doing a very good job. Um, good. I'm glad you're going to try again. It can be, water specifically can be very tough. Um, I've personally been having a lot of fun trying out different water things. Um, but yeah, it's been very intimidating. Uh, before I started trying it, I was like, I don't know how people do this. It took a lot of me just watching various ways to make water um, through painting. Um, so I hope this helps you, Christine. Yeah, I hope the way I'm describing it helps you. I'll actually be doing another watery painting next month, too. I'll uh, show everybody at the end of this tutorial. Rocks on the left have better definition. Uh, these guys? Yeah, they're a little more defined with the, uh, with the highlights, if that's what you're saying, yeah. Or if you mean, like, they'll be closer to us with more definition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely need to fix up this edge. It's looking like the water's going on top, and I don't want that. I want it to be very straight. Very clean edges. Okay, so I've got that mist. So I'm just going to continue, as I said, the idea of, you know, adding some curvy lines, adding some mist. I'll keep talking you through it as I go. So I'm still using the same color, same brush. Just kind of wiping the color off a little bit. I'm now adding curves on the side here. Just coming down where the dark reaches kind of the light area. Uh, I want to make sure I get some water on top of these rocks. So I'm throwing some quick curves over the rocks as well. And again, you can obviously follow kind of the patterns I'm making here. Claire, oh my gosh, hi! We're doing a little painting tutorial right now. What were you doing? I saw your cows you were making recently. They were so cute. I don't know if you made more of those. Welcome in everybody from Claire's stream. Uh, who do we have? Oh, Allie, thank you for following, my gosh. See you all the time in Claire's stream. Hello. Yeah, for those who don't know, I do um step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials online. So we have a lot of people here painting along, following along. Some people are just watching and kind of learning how to paint certain things. So you can see the original in the bottom right here, I guess middle. And uh, we're just getting that river done. And then we'll be putting a nice beautiful tree on top. Inner Glow, thank you for following as well. Welcome in. Claire Raid, yeah, everyone, Claire is one of my favorite, no lie, favorite painters on Twitch. Even during my time offline, I was still finding my way to her stream. Even though I wasn't taking a lot of time to watch other streams, I still was so inspired by watching her. So if you haven't checked out Claire, please, please do. I'm not just saying that to be nice. I truly, truly love Claire's streams and she is such an inspiration to me. There you go. Please view her, please see her paintings, her beautiful works of art. I'm the cool lady. Welcome in, cool lady. Hello. Just want to make sure I'm saying hi to everyone else, too. There's Allie. Hello. Hi, Allie. It's good to see you here. And is it Noit? Noit Vulps? Welcome in as well. Got all, get all the Claire hearts in there. Yeah, thank you, Claire, for bringing one, everyone over. That's really sweet of you. Really sweet of you. I hope everyone enjoys watching this painting come to life over the next couple steps here. I'm just still adding some water. So I'm kind of in teaching mode, but also chatty mode if you want to chat a little bit. Just might take me a little longer to uh, see the chats here. So still adding those curves. Again, you can kind of follow your own way with the river as well. I'm trying to show you like an example of how you can create different layers, but if you find that you want to make a layer yourself or I don't have a layer, of course do that. There's no rule that says it has to go exactly the way mine is, right? Lots of different ways this river can flow. Lots of different little waterfall patches and more relaxed areas. So I've got all my curves. I've done a little bit of rock covering here. I'm going to go back to swirling my brush now just to get a little more mist and foam in there. 
And you can kind of add this again sporadically throughout all of these areas because there's lots of little layers, at least in my painting, so it makes sense there would be a lot of rough waters pretty much everywhere here. Just trying not to overdo it with too, too much, of course. So trying to add it in small little patches. So maybe like by this rock, maybe I'll go over here. Trying, of course, to follow what I had originally. That's always going to be a tad different. <clears throat> and then I'll mention again, I know I said it before, but if you ever feel like you go overboard with the step or just want to like dilute anything mute anything a little bit more you can always go back in with your blue you can actually use the same kind of technique of just kind of dry brushing or rubbing your brush with a small amount of paint on top and that'll help just kind of fade out the mist too like you might not want to even just erase the mist you just might want it a little less less prominent and that's how you can do that just taking your background blue and kind of rubbing that on top <laughs> right Vonda? Yeah, and more at your own speed too, I assume. I know a lot of people look forward to that. Yes, for those who are interested, I do post these tutorials on YouTube as well. I do like the idea of obviously painting them live with everybody. I think it's a really cool idea. But I know it doesn't work for everyone's schedule and some people want to kind of paint on their own and do it on their own time. So I do post these to YouTube after in case anyone's curious. All step by step. Trying to go at a decent pace, so not the slowest, but trying, of course, not to rush anybody here. <clears throat> Flogiston, hey! A little freaked out for a sec. I thought you were in the hot tub pool. No! <laughs> Can't say I've ever been there. I've never found myself in a hot tub or a pool while streaming on Twitch, so... We have a body of water, but that's about the closest we got. And I'm not in it, so... Nope, nope. A little freaked out. <laughs> yep, just not for me. I think it'll just be me here in this room for a while. No pools or hot tubs. Alright, so I've kind of finished off that area there. Again, I will add some white to really bring out some highlights, but I'm just going to continue down. I'm going to do more of a calm section again. So I'm going to go back to more horizontal strokes, kind of like up here. And I'll do one more kind of layer of those nice curves and I'll be coming down to the left this time and kind of brushing on top of these rocks. But yeah, I hope you've been well, Flogiston. Yeah, when that new category was up, I was tempted to do like a a jokey stream where I buy like a little inflatable pool and stick it in here. I wouldn't even have water in it. <laughs> Fully clothed. <laughs> like, here we are. I did it. Hopped onto the trend. But of course, no, it didn't happen. All right, so once again, same color. I have not changed colors this whole time. We're still using that kind of gray blue. Just very lightly swiping left and right with a small amount of paint on the brush. So I'm still wiping it off on the side here before going in. And then gently, gently wisping left and right. Wisping left and right. Again, looking for kind of the bottoms of those rocks. That helps kind of push them down into the water again. Wisping right along the bottoms and on the edges. Oh, Jen, you're here too? Hi! Getting a lot of raids. For those unfamiliar with Twitch, raiding is when another channel chooses to pop their viewers over to me. It's getting lots of people in. Jen, welcome in. How are you? What were you painting today? Were you doing more animals? I see you doing a lot of quick sketches on Twitter recently. I like them. They're like little mini toots, mini tutorials. They're great. Ali, I like how the cliff looks. Kind of look like you can walk up there, no problem. <laughs> yeah, very small, right? <laughs> nice, easy hike. Nice, easy walk up. I feel you. But thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, Jen Raid. Chew, welcome in. I'll wait for Jen to uh, pop on in here if she wants to talk about what she was up to. 
But if she has to raid and run too, I understand. Okay, so I've got my little calm area. And once again, I'm just going to switch back to doing my quick little curvy streaks to add some more of like a little waterfall area. Same thing, going to start by doing some over top of the rocks. Very soft. Just kind of spraying over. They almost look a little spidery to begin with, but I find the more you add kind of around them, the more they look a little more cohesive and they make a little more sense. You can even split. You don't even have to continue the same way. You don't have to keep going left, I think. Yeah, there was one rock where I kind of did a couple curves coming left and coming right, as if it's kind of split the little stream of water up a little bit. Jen, I was. I did a pencil and watercolor bison. Oh, very cool. Very cool. I'll look for that. I assume you'll post that up. I don't look at your YouTube, Jen, but I know you're pretty active on there, yeah? Based on what I see you tweeting about anyway. I feel like I see you more on Twitter. Do you post um, kind of like short form videos or are those more long, long form that you do on YouTube? Mizzy, hey, welcome in. Just doing a little painting tutorial. Hello. Hope you're enjoying liking what you see. Okay, now you can see I'm just kind of filling up the space. I'm not necessarily looking at where the rocks are. I'm just kind of doing the whole straight across and then curving. Filling up a little more space. Straight across, curve, straight across, curve. So again, as if it's like approaching and then dipping off very fast. And if you want less transparency, if maybe you're not a fan of how transparent this is, you want to make it a little more filled up, just use a little more paint on your brush. Um, I've been using minimal amounts and then wiping it off, but as you gain some confidence and kind of learn how the paint, I guess, comes off of your brush, you can start to use a little more paint, be a little more daring, get some thicker areas going. Over and down. See, I'm going to switch. I'll do this side now. Do lots of shorts. Okay, that's interesting. i am uh, never tried making a short. I know short form content seems to be a little more popular these days. I just can't seem to <laughs> make myself do it. That's interesting. Thanks, Jen. I was always curious what you post there. I should have just went and looked, but yeah, I see you more on Twitter. I guess this would kind of maybe bump off again. YouTube like emailed me about making shorts recently, just one of their automated like, hey creator emails. And I was like, oh gosh, what do you want from me now? <laughs> what free content do you want me to make YouTube? Please just let me be. <laughs> <clears throat> Apparently can't tell the difference between bison and buffalo. Uh, Aoni? Is that right? Welcome in. Thanks for following. Didn't want to botch your name, so sorry if I did. Bison and buffalo. Is there a difference? I don't know if I know the difference either. I guess it's two different names, so there's probably a difference. I picture the same thing with hearing both, though. Okay, I think I'm happy with what I've got here in terms of like my little misty bits. My running water might add a tiny bit more, not too much though. Excited to show you guys the white that we add when we add that nice highlight on top. Our buffalo are smooth coated, spend a lot of time in the water because it's so hot. Versus bison are more like fluffy. I don't want to say fluffy, but you know, a little bit of a heavier coat, maybe. Yeah, embarrassed to say, I don't think I know the difference. I probably should. I learn a lot on Twitch, though, so glad I'm here to learn. You can all educate me. Uh, 
Okay. Let's add our little highlights. So we have a really nice base for all of our running water, but you can still see a slight difference. We can see that this one here, a lot brighter in spots, especially where, again, that mist or foam is. And then maybe a little bit in the rushing water. It was kind of nice to just do a tiny little bit of white just to get a little more of a highlight on top. So let's do that. And then, oh, and then we pretty much just have to do the big branch in the middle. Okay, so just washing off my brush, same brush as usual, medium round. And this time, no mixing required. Doo -doo -doo. We just have a plain white, plain white. Didn't mix this with anything. Excuse me, fly, I'm trying to paint. Excuse me, excuse me. Ah, interference. Uh, yeah, just grabbing plain white and then once again, kind of tapping it off a little bit. We once again don't want a lot of paint on our brush. So just kind of dip into the white, tap off a little. And as I pointed out already, you can kind of see if you really start to look on the painting here, the very highlighted spots. But especially right in this middle area here, I just like to add a little bit more mist with the white and you can see how that kind of pops off as a nice highlight. So just once again, using a small amount of paint, swirling my brush just very lightly. Just right on top of what I have already too. That way we're Oh, that was a hair, thank goodness. Um, yeah, that way we're creating some nice layers. We can still kind of see in the background that off-white. But we can add this really nice highlight here. Bundles of fluffy cuteness. I love that. Google water buffalo when you get off stream. That's what we have here. I will. I'll educate myself. I don't like figuring out that I don't know things while on Twitch. <laughs> like, wait. <laughs> Why don't I know this fact? <laughs> so slowly but surely just adding those nice white highlights. You have flies, I have ants. There's just been one to two flies bugging me in this room for like weeks now. I don't have any food in here other than a very closed off water bottle. And I don't know why they like to hang out here. One or two. Um, I have a dust buster beside me and I've been trying to catch them because I don't like squishing flies. It really gives me the jitters when I squish a fly. I really don't like it, even if it's in a Kleenex or something. So I just try and suck them up in here. And obviously I have not been successful because there's still one buzzing around. I thought I caught one at one point. It's hard to tell. They kind of disappear in there, in the dust buster. Anywho. Yeah, he's still there. Maybe a little up here, maybe a little like on the rocks, for example, to highlight those. One or two little glints up here. Just so they pop right off of uh, when compared to the other, other off-whites that we've already added. Little in here, little in there. Let's go nice and slow and you really can't go wrong. And once again, you can really choose where to add these highlights because we don't have a light source technically in the painting. So I'm sure you could choose where that is and what that'll mean for your highlights. I really just used a direct reference and tried to look at where the highlights were in the reference photo. So that's because I was trying to replicate that, right? So if you want to make a different little area with different highlights, you can absolutely do that. Versus North, so we don't have Buffalo. My gosh, see, like I'm embarrassing myself now. I feel like this would have been grade six information. Buffalo and Bison. I thought we learned about Buffalo, honestly. Dustbusters are great for crunchy creatures. I'd like, I thought it was a good idea, Jem, but it hasn't been super successful. <laughs> I'd like to think it's a good idea though. Maybe I just need to get better at using it. I'm not fast enough. These guys are too quick. They hear me start up the thing and then they go fly away. Okay, so you can see where I'm adding the other layers of mist. I'll try and keep talking you through it here. You can see I'm adding it 
just right at the bottom of our kind of second layer. Second kind of waterfall layer. Just some nice highlights popping up from there. And then I really like adding it on these little wispy areas here. So rather than just sticking to the foam or the mist, I like to use the white to create just a couple little, little highlight streaks of the water kind of zooming, zooming off of this ledge here. So just a couple, leaving it alone. Maybe I'll do a couple kind of zooming off this guy. And not even completing some of the strokes, right? You can kind of keep it just on the upper half and that way it looks like the top half is being highlighted. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, Jen, I don't know if you have experience with this, but it's been tough. It's been tough for me to use that dust buster. The flies are too smart. They know what to look for now. They've, uh, they've talked with each other about my ways. Like, look out. Look out for that big machine she carries around. Okay, not too much more. Again, we don't want to overwhelm it with white. It's supposed to be a nice highlight after all. Uh, Ray Rentals, hey! Cool artwork. My medium is TH Oil. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. You paint with that or other things? Ha 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 ha. Ha ha ha. Couple more, couple more. That's a new one. I haven't heard that one in two years on Twitch, so congrats to you. There we go. A little brighter down there. Looking good. Okay, so at this point, once again, I'll pause. I'll give a couple minutes in case anyone's still adding the white there, or just working on those little rushing areas in the water. And then we can get to... I'm just double checking. I haven't missed anything. I think we're on our final steps here of just adding a quick branch and then adding some nice fall colored leaves, some nice yellows, oranges, reds, things like that. Crystal, hey, welcome in. To all the buns, yeah. We're just finishing up our toot. You can see it's almost there. It still looks pretty empty up here, but it's because when we add this branch, it really fills up, I promise. Welcome in, Crystal. Hope you're well. That was just the fly saying hello again. <clears throat> yeah, I forgot how many techniques were in this painting in terms of dealing with the water and trees and rock. So we packed in quite a lot into this. Again, if you're interested, I will show you... Um, the other painting design I have prepped for a tutorial for next month. I was going to ask you guys a question about what you want for next month and we'll we'll figure that out near the end. I don't want to distract ourselves from this one too much. Excuse me, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, I've been thinking of getting back into oil paints again. I know I just said that I didn't really vibe with them, but I've decided after doing more research that I think I didn't vibe with the chemical aspect of oil paints in terms of like, what I mean is the whole, hey, you could maybe like die. <laughs> a lot of people make a huge, huge deal about it. And I didn't really know if it was like still a thing or not. Cause I also heard from other artists that's more of an older thing. Older oils used to have all the scary chemicals, and if you don't have proper ventilation, it can be a bad time. But I've been learning, I've been learning there are water-based oil paints. Or maybe just water-soluble? I don't want to say based, excuse me. But you can use them with water. You don't need to buy all the little spirits and everything. You don't need to worry about ventilated areas, from what I understand. I'm going to do more research first, but I'm wondering... If that might reignite my inspiration for oils a bit. I've been really considering it. To be continued, to be determined, I guess. Because again, there is something about watching other people paint with oils that I'm like, ah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> Every time I see a painting I'm really inspired by, I'm like, what medium? Oils. I'm like, oh, okay. So maybe one day. 
Okay, oh wow, we are approaching three hours here for this toot. This has been a learning experience for me, doing a longer toot. I now know better what to say for our next one. Okay, so looking at our original one more time, we have this nice big branch coming right in the middle here. Um, and this was honestly a debate if I wanted to add this or not, because I really did like the focus being on the water and the waterfall and all that. And I thought maybe the branch would, you know, kind of cover up a little too much, but I like it. Um, but I'm just saying that out loud because if you feel like you're at this stage and you're like, hey, I really like what I've done, you know, I don't want to stick a branch in front or, you know, I'm really proud of these trees. I don't want to cover them up or the water. You do whatever you like. Um, no pressure here. It's not an incomplete painting if you don't follow all of my steps. If you like what you have or want to even add something different at this point, feel free. Um, I always just like to say that in case anyone's feeling the pressure of completing the painting with me. I don't want anyone feeling that, so you do what you feel like. But if you're feeling like adding that last big branch, I'm going to do that now. So I'm going back to my palette here. I'm still using that same medium round brush and I'm now actually making a gray we've been using a lot of browns here and so just to make sure this branch can kind of be seen on top of those browns and the blues of course I'm making a kind of medium slate gray for our branch that way we can kind of see it just slightly indicated on top of all our stuff waterfalls looking nice thank you thank you thank you so much Okay, so like a medium gray, so that was white and black mixed together. I would say like roughly even amounts. I'm just once again trying to get something that's not super light, but not super dark. Using the tip of my brush, I'm going to start somewhere down in the bottom left. And I'm trying to make just a very straight, angled, sharp looking branch. I imagine this is like a big old branch kind of coming off of a big tree that's, you know, way off over here. So you can see I'm just doing and try my best to keep my lines quite straight, quite thin. So I'm just using the very tip of the brush with a small amount of pressure, trying to kind of flick on the way, just doing small, quick little brush strokes. And if I want this branch to move anywhere different than where it's going, I'm doing a very quick angle. So making sharp corners. I'm not bending, I'm not doing curves or anything. I want this to look very kind of rickety, kind of showcasing the branch itself because all the leaves are kind of falling off. Everything's just very sharp. So I'm kind of making this branch go a couple different ways. You can see I obviously started in the bottom left. And I'm already splitting it up. I'm kind of splitting one little branch coming this way or a couple twigs going this way rather kind of right on top of our waterfall. Again, if you dare, if you'd like to move it on top, if you'd rather keep the waterfall nice and open, you can choose where this is going to go. It doesn't have to interfere with other elements if you don't want it to. And you can see just to fill up the branch further, I'm just adding all these small little twigs and I'm just kind of splitting them off in little V shapes. So wherever I have a twig already, you can just kind of add a second one in a little V shape. And that'll help really start to fill up the branch and give lots of room for leaves if that's what you're looking for. And once again, I am just looking at my reference, trying my best to mimic what I have. But like I keep saying, if you feel like making your branch go different directions, you can of course do that. You do not need to follow every little corner I'm doing, every little edge. Even if you just want to use this as a base, feel free. And then the other thing that I want to mention is that I'm of course keeping these branches as thin as possible. You can see I'm trying to keep them very thin. Um, but a good way to make them look very thin and pointy is to make sure your base is a little thicker here. So you can kind of do an extra stroke or two, thicken that up a little bit. It's going to make everything else look smaller, even if it's not like the smallest line in the world. As long as this one's a little thicker, it's going to make these look a little more delicate than they might already be. So thicken up your base a little extra, I would say. <clears throat> Edson says, uh, that's the same with screen printing inks, originally 3D, uh, third oil and lead. Um, they had oil and lead maybe? Yeah, based in the last 25 years, major ink base changes with the same finished products, even better in some of this. That's good, that's good. 
Yeah, I imagine I was probably reading online and had some more traditional knowledge about oil paint saying like, again, make sure your window's open. By the way, your paints might set on fire or something like that. There was like talk about putting oil paints in the trash or the spirits, I guess, and they could ignite. And I was like, I, I just don't, I don't know enough. <laughs> I don't know enough to be responsible with this medium. And I just stuck with my acrylics. So I think I just need to look more at uh, more modern <laughs> current day oil paints. And there's tons now that I understand that some of them are, again, I think it's water soluble, not water based. Because acrylic is water based. Um, or to be used with water. Anyway, now that I know those exist, I'm a little more excited about looking all that stuff up, learning a little more. Okay, and then one key, I guess, with this branch, I kind of pointed it out already, but this is a pretty blank spot up here. So if you want to make sure that's covered, just really make sure you're making this branch travel up, up, up into that area. So just really extend some branches, add some more twigs to kind of fill up the area a little extra. And then that way you can really fill it up with leaves and uh, cover up that blank spot. But yeah, I found some nice starter sets. So uh, anyway, maybe once I move, that'll be something I can further explore. Don't want to buy stuff and then have to pack it all up. Okay. So that's looking pretty similar to mine, I would say. Oh, I do have this little little guy peeking over here. If you want to add just a little bonus, bonus branch, I do have a little little guy peeking up kind of in the bottom left here. Because again, I imagine this is like a big tree, like in the very foreground here, just off of the canvas. So maybe we have a couple little indications of smaller, smaller little branches coming in to say hi as well. There, that works. Cute. Okay, I'll just leave that there in case anyone wants to see the branch just by itself. And we're going to fill her up. Fill her up with lots of leaves. And yeah, I know I've talked about gouache before too, but what was I doing the other day? I was painting something the other day where I was like, I feel like I'm using my acrylic paints as if I'd want to use gouache. I've never tried gouache um, for the record, for context, but I think I've been watching a lot of content where people use gouache in their paintings and I'm almost like, <laughs> I think picking up techniques that should be used with gouache and trying to use them with, with acrylic, which isn't so bad. It seems to be working okay, but I'm kind of like, shouldn't I just try the other medium that I learned these techniques about <laughs> rather than trying to incorporate them with acrylic? I like the opacity of gouache paints. They're very like, they're not like thick texture wise, they're just thick on top. You can layer very nicely with them from what I've seen. I don't know if wet on wet is encouraged with gouache, but I feel like I've seen that. Still giving another minute or two just in case anybody's uh, still drawing in that branch, painting in that branch, excuse me. I'm glad, Charlene. I hope you're having a good time with it. Again, I keep, I keep saying I know it's a little bit of a challenge, but I hope everyone's still enjoying it just the same. Or maybe more so. Maybe some feel like they're learning a little extra. Don't know. I'll be curious about feedback once... Uh, once people finish up. So I guess I'll talk about the branch a little bit just to give you another extra minute on painting there. 
But the branch here you can see I've filled up with pretty much all the beautiful fall colors. We have some yellows, we got some oranges, we got more of like some muted tones as well, kind of like a, not like a bright red like we had up here, but more of like a brown red. I don't want to say maroon, that's wrong, but yeah, something a little more muted, a little more earthy. Um, and what I tried to do is I did kind of some gradients. You can kind of see on some branches how I maybe start with one color and slowly move into different colors. That's why I really liked this branch. It was a lot of fun. Um, you can see like here I started with yellow, moved into orange, moved into red. And again, that was my idea of the leaves changing, right? We don't see the leaves change all at once into yellow. They're always like small little gradients. Um, I think it has to do with their sunlight. Uh, I could be wrong, but obviously it has to do with something if they're happening in patches and gradients like that. So uh, yeah, I wanted to showcase that by doing lots of different shades of yellows, oranges, reds, and all kind of combining them, you can see on one branch and kind of gradient down into the other colors. You can see it here too. So that's what we'll do here. Um, I'll start us off with some lighter colors. We're going to start with a very pale yellow and then we'll slowly mix in some oranges and then into like a nice deep red just to kind of finish off um, our branches. All right, so let's make a nice pale yellow to start. So still using the same brush, medium round. Using lots of white and a little bit of yellow. So we're trying to make it just a nice pale yellow. Ah. Just trying to find a clean spot here, maybe right here. Nice pale bright yellow. So aiming for like a buttery yellow I would say at this point we're actually trying to make a lighter yellow versus before we were adding white to our yellow just to uh, help with opacity and transparency. But now I'm going for more of a you can see very pale yellow compared to the bright yellow up there. Okay and then to apply the leaves I am using like I said my medium round brush uh, and even if you don't have the exact same brush as me, I would recommend a round brush. I find it's really nice to create these nice little leaf shapes. So in order to create the leaf shape, I kind of angle my brush like this against the canvas. So not straight at it, not like this, we're angling. I press kind of the tip and side against the canvas. I do a small stroke and lift off. And that creates this kind of overly leafy shape. Small brush strokes with the tip and the side of the brush. See how those are starting to form? Thank you, Vonda. I'll grab a sip here. Excuse me, fly. Excuse me. <clears throat> so again, just trying to use the tip, pulling a little bit, doing one small little brush stroke, lifting off, lifting off, lifting off. Can't see him, but the fly keeps almost crawling into the paint. I don't want him to get stuck. Uh, you can see I'm changing the size of the leaves as I go, making some smaller ones, especially near the tips of branches. I like making smaller leaves and then making them maybe a little bigger as they go down the branch. So a smaller leaf you can just make by um, using a little less pressure, just using the very tip of the brush, doing a small little brush stroke. And of course, bigger will mean just using more pressure and a slightly bigger brush stroke. In terms of the direction of the leaves, you can see I'm kind of pointing them either kind of like going up the branch, so you can see how they're like pointing the same direction of the branch, or they kind of point just a little out, but they're all kind of following almost the way the branch is going, if that makes sense. So they're kind of all angling or going up for a branch that's going up like this. They're all kind of waving hello in a way. I try and keep that relatively the same throughout, just so you can still see kind of the direction of the branches uh, through the direction of the leaves. So they are kind of, yeah, angled a little differently throughout, but for each branch they're all kind of pointing in the same direction. Uh, and the other thing I'm doing is I am floating the leaves floating the leaves a little bit off of the branch. You do not need to connect them all like this, kind of all in a row. They don't all need to be touching on the exact same little ending spot here. You can kind of float them further away. Kind of sporad not sporadically place them, but kind of push them a little further away, push them a little closer, not intersect them. I can't think of the word. 
but kind of allowing them to all fit together without quite lining them all up. That's what I'm getting at. We want to avoid putting big rows of leaves like the three that I just put there. I'm trying instead to um, kind of scatter them in a way. Okay, so I'm gonna <laughs> not add too many more there. I got a little caught up in instructing. I wanted to show you lots of examples of leaves, but if I want that nice gradient, I'm gonna stop there for the yellow here. I'm gonna now move the yellow. Maybe I'll add some here, for example. I'm trying to leave some room for our other colors. Do -do -do. Oh, I gotta chug some water. Okay, so once again with the yellow, I am trying to look more at the tips where maybe leaves are turning a little bit more. I think I'll add maybe a little over here. Not too many. And then that way we have more room for our oranges and things as well. Even if it's just a couple here and there, it's kind of nice to have just a couple that are turning completely yellow. Then we can sprinkle those in with some oranges and stuff. <clears throat> Edson, join me in my evening with you. I must leave. No worries. We'll check out YouTube. Absolutely, yes. Third Sunday monthly going forward. Um, good question. So I used to try and do these on a specific Sunday of the month, but I was kind of losing the ability of doing that. There are too many changes involved anyway, so it got kind of confusing. So for now, what I say is just one Sunday a month. I give lots of notice when I um, post the next event. I would recommend checking out Facebook if you like these tutorials specifically, because Facebook is where I'll post like a Facebook event page for the upcoming event. You can RSVP to get notifications. Um, that's the most obvious spot. But otherwise, if, you, um, if you'd rather be on Twitch, uh, just check my about section on Twitch and I usually update that with the upcoming tutorial date. And again, I'll be putting a link to the Facebook page anyway, so you can see the actual design. And then otherwise, Discord is good as well. If you're Discord savvy, I do notify people with a weekly schedule in there with exactly what I'm doing. And so the week of a tutorial, you'll see the tutorial um, included in that schedule. So yeah, a couple options for you. But I would just say more of a sporadic Sunday with a couple weeks notice. <laughs> Sorry, I can't be more consistent. I tried, it just, again, it wasn't working and, you know, just one, one little plan on a Sunday will uh, cause, cause the two to change. So didn't want to keep doing that and confusing people. But yeah, hope to see you another time. Glad you enjoyed what you saw though. <clears throat> All right, so that's probably it for my yellow. Again, I didn't want to overload it too much because it's a very bright color. So we're going to leave some room for some oranges and reds. I'll just give another minute or two if you're adding the yellow, then we can add in those oranges and reds on top. And what I'll be doing is I'll be sticking to mainly three colors. So I have my light yellow. I'll be walking us through kind of like a nice muted orange and then a muted red. Um, but again, there's no rule that says you have to only stick to three colors. If you really like the gradient look and just want to add way more colors, you can always do that. Like in between yellows and oranges and gold colors. These are again a little more muted that I'll be adding. But yeah, you do you. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We can start to move into, like I said, the oranges and then some reds. All right. 
So orange is made by mixing yellow and red. I'm going to keep it more yellow than I am red. So it's going to be more of a light orange again. And I said it was kind of a muted orange, muted. So it's not going to be like a, the bright oranges we have back here. What I'm going to do to mute this is, of course, I'm going to add some white. It makes it a little more pale, just a little less vibrant. And that's what we're looking for here. So in total, that was three colors. That was yellow, red, and white. And that creates, oh, you can see here, more of a muted orange versus this orange up here, a lot brighter. Okay, and I'm going to start by adding these kind of either right into the yellow or right below the yellow as well. We don't want to stack it up too much on the yellow. We kind of want to allow the yellow to have its moment up here. You can sprinkle a little bit just to show a transition, right? And then we can start to literally add like an orange section. So on this branch here, I'll start to really stack on the orange. That's a separate area here. Great, thank you. I'm new to Twitch, that's fine. You will, by for now, fellow artists. Yes, have a good evening, Edson. It was nice chatting with you. And yeah, new to Twitch. I know a lot of you are probably new to Twitch with me here. I know a lot of you find me on Facebook. So yeah, if there are any questions about Twitch, especially as we're finishing up here, in terms of how the whole dang thing works or just anything you've seen that's been confusing, I'm more than happy to answer questions. So yeah, absolutely let me know if I can make things a little more comfortable or just inform you a bit more about this new space that you might be in here. Claire, hey! Sorry, I was making food. Yeah, no worries. Thank you, thank you. I was just saying thanks for the raid. Um, yeah, shouting you out, telling people to check you out because you've been a huge inspiration to me. Um, especially as I've been offline. I took like a little break from streaming for five-ish months. And uh, yeah, I took away a, a break from Twitch in general too, just as a viewer. But I still watched you here and there and it was really nice and inspiring. So thank you for that. It was always a nice little cozy space to go and uh, just lurk and watch you paint and get inspired for when I was ready to do that again. So thank you. Okay, just traveling these down. And if you have any blank branches at this point, you can start to fill those up with the orange. I would recommend that or else you're going to have some branches that only have red on them. If you like the nice little ombre transitions, you'll want to put some orange on there first. I'm a big taking breaks. Yeah. Yeah. And it really, um, I was talking to someone about this earlier, regardless of like what I had going on in my life at the moment, it definitely helped just like reignite inspiration in general. So I think I might just do that more on a regular basis, hopefully not for five months at a time, but <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks here and there, I can see that being super beneficial for like, reducing burnout because I don't think I went through burnout but that may have been a piece of it I was going through something different but yeah maybe that was hidden in there as well because coming back it wasn't just feeling capable again I was like I just have so many things I want to paint that I didn't before so yeah <clears throat> butterfly hi what's up primals hello what's up we're painting Welcome in. We're doing a little step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm almost done. You can see the original right here. Just kind of uh, teaching everyone how to do it. Welcome in though. Okay, these are filling up. I just have one more color to go after this orange is done. And I guess if I didn't say it before too, um, there's no rule that says you need to fill up every single branch, you know, the full amount or even at all. If you want to just throw a couple little leaves like that, that's kind of nice. Makes it look a little more delicate and just leave it alone. Doesn't need to be filled up every single time the same way. That's fine. There. 
Okay. So I'll give you all another minute or two if you're still adding the orange, and then we're just going to uh, add the kind of muted red tone. And we'll be pretty much there. Thank you, Vray. Thank you. I'm glad you're enjoying. And yeah, this painting honestly was a little, um, <laughs> a little scary for me. Um, after taking that amount of time away, I hadn't taught any of my original painting tutorials in that time. So honestly, creating a new design was a little scary. I feel like I kind of forgot how to do it for a minute. <laughs> So I'm glad everyone's been uh, been a fan of this and in my upcoming one. I can't wait to show that to everybody when we're all finished here. Just one more step to go. All right, so I've been kind of mixing on my on my palette here. I've been mixing the last color, which is what I call like a muted red. Um, again, we can see a big difference between the bright red here and the reds used in this tree. These are more muted, a little more like earthy in a way. So a little bit of a funny mixture of colors, but I've got it here for you. So what I did is I grabbed my red. I'm going to remix it just so you can kind of see. I added, you can see a tiny bit of black in there, and that makes it more of like a maroon. And if you feel like it looks too maroon, like almost like a purple, which is what we don't really want, um, you could add a little yellow to it as well. And that's what I did for this. The yellow kind of pulls it a little more into the warmer, like, orangey, burnt orange area, I guess. So a little yellow could help. So I would start with your red and black. Red and a tiny bit of black, I'll say again, tiny, tiny bit. And then if you feel like, again, it's leaning a little too on the purple or maroon zone, you could add some yellow to it. And that's what I did for mine. And that's how I get this kind of burnt red color. Rusty red. Or again, if you're not a fan of the rustier, muted colors, you can always just use a nice bright red as well. But I thought this was a nice contrast between the bright red and our foreground tree here. All right, here I go, just adding those in. Same idea, I like to kind of place them in and amongst the orange just to allow a little bit of a transition there. And then I'll start to kind of cover up just new spaces with the red. And on my tree, that tends to be further down the branches. I kind of kept the lighter colors on the tips of the branches. So I'm kind of adding these reds a little further down. Which kind of makes sense, right? If my theory, <laughs> I don't know if that's fully correct. I think the leaves change with the sun, right? I think the more exposure to the sun, the more they're going to change or faster, I guess they're going to change. So if that's right, then I guess this makes sense for keeping the lighter leaves near the top and the darker ones closer to the bottom where it's a little more shaded. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, if you feel like three colors isn't enough you want to capture all of the colors of fall obviously just keep mixing your reds and yellows together throw in some little whites or blacks if you need to change up uh, the tone a little bit or the shade rather again I always mix those up and uh, yeah you'll get some lovely lovely in-between shades as well I went a little high with these reds but I don't mind it Again, you can kind of break the rules sometimes. There's no real, real rules, just my suggestions. And if you want to scatter these leaves a little bit more than usual, you can of course do that. You can see it looks nice having all three of those colors kind of interacting with each other there. Okay, so just as I'm wrapping this up here, this is the last step, which I'm just continuing. Um, I know there were a lot of questions throughout the event um, about where I'm posting this or can I view this later? The answer is yes for anyone just tuning in now or still waiting for that answer. 
I always post these to my YouTube channel. Um, usually within a week of airing, I try my best anyway. Sometimes it turns into a month, but we won't talk about that. Uh, yeah, just keep an eye on the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. It's the same name as here on Twitch. And in the meantime, you have like 70 plus other tutorials to uh, busy yourself with as you wait for this one. So yeah, you can always look for any of my free tutorials there if you miss them live on Twitch. And again, that's consistent. I don't think I'll ever stop doing that as long as I keep doing these live ones. There's really no point in me stopping that. So you can always expect that. I get the question a lot, so always expect that I will upload for free. Cute. So yes, I could have obviously spent a little more time just kind of not blending these together, but yeah, allowing the transition to happen a little smoother. I feel like this is a little more blocky than my original there. And it's probably just because I took a little more care in the little transition areas, just making sure all those colors blend together nicely. Again, not literally blending color on top of color, but more so just helping with the smooth transition of scattering those leaves a little bit better. But otherwise, it's pretty much there. Cute. Okay, yeah, longer tutorial. Oh my gosh, we're at like three hours plus, 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 plus. Wow. Thank you for sticking with me, everybody, for those who stuck around. If you are caught up with me, amazing. <laughs> You've painted this whole three and a bit hours with me, amazing. Uh, feel free to sign your painting if you're all done. There we go. Sign your painting, finish her all off, mark it complete. The signature always helps me kind of say like, okay, it is done. <laughs> uh, Grok set it up, I think it was treat, let me see. There you go. Right, so um, again, if you liked this tonight, I try and do this once a month. Now that I'm back on Twitch, I guess I try and do it once a month. Um, so feel free to look out for the next tutorial, which um, again, I'll post about here on Twitch in my about section. Um, on Facebook, I'll post an event page. And again, on Discord as well, I'll always be chatting about uh, tutorials there too. So if you're interested in finding the next one, any three of those spots is good. I would recommend Facebook over all of them though. It's just the, usually the first place that I post the tutorials and it's a spot where I can upload an image and all the details. So check that out. But yeah, in terms of next tutorial, I might ask this question again, either on stream on Tuesday or just through a couple social media posts. Still, oh boy, that's okay. I don't need a trade right now. It's like 1030, it's okay. But thank you for thinking of me, Vonda. Um, yeah, I'll be asking people opinions, but I made this, um, this wave painting <clears throat> and I'd love to teach it. Again, I know it's a little more of a challenging one, but I think we can do it with a little bit of a longer time period. Um, so I know everyone's really excited about this one, but I'm curious if they want to do it for next month, which is October, of course, the spooky Halloween-y season, um, or if they'd rather leave it. But I think people are going to say they want to paint it despite the season, which is fine by me, so... Um, I might ask that one more time during another live stream, but uh, either way, you will you can you can expect to have that one coming up as a free tutorial. I just don't know exactly what date. It might be a Sunday in o October, might be a Sunday in November. Thank you, Vonda and Christine. Thank you and Mizzy. Thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thanks. I wasn't sure how many people were still active in the chat, but yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, again, I've been um, inspired by watching people paint water recently. That includes waves, that includes just like different different variations. Yeah, so I wanted to take a crack at maybe teaching you all a couple things that I learned. Um, so yeah, again, I'll, I'll announce this very soon if it's coming up in October. Otherwise, I'll keep it, keep it my little collection for November. Um, but either way, Either way, I will be streaming on Tuesday again for those who are looking for my next stream as well. Um, and I will be painting. I've been switching up my content recently. I've been doing some gaming. I've been doing some bullet journaling. I guess that's been for a while I've been doing that. But uh, yeah, Tuesday is going to be a painting stream. So if you like seeing me paint on Twitch, you can check me out uh, on Tuesday at 4 p.m. Trying to stream consistent Tuesdays at 4 p.m. EST now. Oh yes, Fonda, yes. Anything, again, anything I teach live will be on YouTube too. So um, considering that one will be taught live, I will indeed, indeed put that on YouTube as well. I saw the fly there. I saw him. 
Cannot catch them though. Mizzy, thank you for 14 bits. All the cute little rainbow unicorns. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, what else do I usually say at the end of these? I think that's all. Um, I guess I'll just encourage everybody, if anybody painted along tonight and wants to show their artwork, I'd love to see. Um, feel free to post that in any spot that works for you. Again, I'll link Discord in the chat there. There's a nice little art share section in there. Um, if you like posting to Instagram, you can tag me um, so I can see it. If you prefer Facebook, you can post in that event page. Uh, lots of different spots. I just hope uh, you're willing to share. I'd love to see what you made. It's always fun too for other people to see. Um, it inspires them to create as well, to see other people creating their little masterpieces. So if you feel like sharing, that would be cool. And yeah, I think that's all. So thanks for coming. Thank you.